A perfect 11-0 mark during the regular season and 1-0 here in the postseason means nothing if the Blazers don't win today. That's right, it's the postseason, and that means only one thing, win or go home. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Baysmore Hyder Stadium for a second-round playoff game in the NCAA Division II race for the national championship. Alongside Mike Jabora, I'm Robin Despain. Thanks for joining us. Today we've got a great matchup for you featuring the Catawba Indians, champions of the South Atlantic Conference, against the Gulf South Conference champion, Valdosta State Blazers. Now, Mike, this is a do-or-die game for both teams. The winner gets to play football next weekend. The loser doesn't play again until next fall. Robin, you're exactly right. This is playoff football. A Blazer win today will result in a semifinal matchup versus either Grand Valley State or Saginaw Valley State, two Michigan teams. But lose today, the Blazers' perfect regular season goes for naught, and Coach Chris Hatcher will have plenty of time to work on his golf game. Although the Blazers did play well enough to win last week, defeating Fort Valley State by a score of 40-24, to 24, the Blazers fell victim to seven turnovers, including three interceptions by Dusty Bonner. For the Blazers to win today, they're going to have to do two things. One is protect the football. Dusty Bonner's just going to have to do a better job of reducing those turnovers. And two, they're just going to have to do what's worked for them all year long. Establish the running game with Aaron Jenkins. And Dusty Bonner must go to his go-to guys, C.J. Lofton and Reggie Mosley, and get them involved early. All right, let's take a look now at the starting lineups for the Blazers. First on offense, the leading receiver this season for the Blazers, number four, Reggie Mosley. On the line, the left tackle, number 77, Jason King. The left guard, number 60, Keith Goss. The center, number 67, Tully Payne. The right guard, number 62, Bill Epps. He's back from injury. The right tackle, number 63, Chance Hutto. Tight end slash receiver for the Blazers, number 15, C.J. Lofton. Quarterback, the All-American from right here in Vadosta, Georgia, and last year's Harlan Hill Award winner, number 17, Dusty Bonner. In the backfield, the fullback, number 20, Tyran Robinson. Halfback, the second leading rusher in the Gulf South Conference this season, number 14, Aaron Jenkins. Another of Bonner's favorite targets, receiver number seven, Carlos Johnson. And the place kicking duties for the Blazers today goes to number 37, Reed Bethay. All right, Robin, looking at our defensive starters, at our ends we have weekend number 92, Todd Ragel. At strong end we have number 58, Fatari Lyons. Our tackles are left tackle number 98, Dwayne Smith, and right tackle number 44, Reggie Rhodes. Looking at the linebacking core, we have number one, Tobias Carter. The big man in the middle, number 45, Mike Fowler. And number 32, Reggie Cockrum. In the secondary, we have cornerbacks number 30, Marquise Turner, and number 26, Derek Braxton. Our free safety is number 47, Wesley Brown, and our rover is number three, Sed Dickerson. And taking the punts today is number 46, Brent Palma. You've heard the lineups. It's almost game time. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with the opening kickoff on VSU TV. in an accident and had to go in an ambulance. It hurt a lot and I was real scared. Daddy looks scared too. Where are they, where are they taking it? Every two seconds, someone needs blood. Accident victims, cancer patients, children. Please call the American Red Cross at 1-800-GIVE-LIFE because someone needs you right now. The girl. Was it you who saved my life? I know what's going on here. You don't really want me to live with you. I'm his mother, not yours. You wish someone else was stuck with me. That would be more convenient for you, wouldn't it? People often imagine the worst when you don't tell them you really care. Talk to the ones you love. Welcome back to Baysmore Hyder Stadium, home of the Varasa State Blazers, where today we've got visiting the Catawba Indians from Salisbury, North Carolina. They are the winners of the South Atlantic Conference, and uh, they had a victory, a 35-34 victory, in their first round playoff game against, uh, or, excuse me, over Central Arkansas last weekend. Robin, I just want to give our viewers a quick little uh, background profile on this Catawba team. They're, uh, like you said, out of Salisbury, uh, North Carolina in the South Atlantic Conference. Uh, it's comprised of eight different schools in North Carolina, South Carolina, and Tennessee. 
And uh, Valdosta State has never played Catawba, so this is their first ever meeting here today at Baysmore Hyder Stadium. It's a beautiful day. The sun is out. It's about, what, 70 degrees or so here. And uh, playoff fever is in the air. We got a nice crowd today out yeah. to watch the Blazers. Catawba brought a nice crowd with them. They seem very energetic, and uh, they're here to root their team on. And the Blazers are coming out on the field. The uh, Catawba Indians won the coin toss. They elected to defer, and so the Blazers will receive the ball here at the beginning of the game. And back for the Blazers, number four, Reggie Mosley, and number 14, Aaron Jenkins. Set to kick off for Catawba is number 12, Matt Gross. He's a senior, 6'1", 190 pounds. He's out of Hendersonville, North Carolina. We're just about underway. As and always, back to receive the kickoff is uh, number four, Reggie Mosley, and number 14, Aaron Jenkins. Catawba fans are on their feet, ready to get this game underway. And we're underway here at Baysmore Hyder Stadium. Second round playoff action. The ball goes to number four, Reggie Mosley. Reggie brought down at about the 25-yard uh, line by a whole swarm of Indian defenders. Yeah, nice play right there by the Catawba special teams. Reggie Mosley uh, fielded that kickoff at about the 10-yard line and brought it out to about the 25, so it's uh, about a 15-yard return. And now trotting onto the field for the Blazers, quarterback number 17, Dusty Bonner. He leads this powerful air raid offense against the number one ranked defense in the country, the Catawba Indian defense. Bonner starts off in the shotgun. He's got Jenkins in the backfield behind him, two receivers near and far. Bonner throws out wide, complete to Carlos Johnson, who gets about three yards or so on the play up to about the 29 yard line. Yeah, number seven, Carlos Johnson ran just a quick little curl route, and Dusty Bonner threw it out there to him in the flat, and uh, he had two Catawba defenders waiting on him, so not really much he could do with that play. Second down and seven coming up for the Blazers ball on their own 30-yard line. Bonner is in shotgun again, but this time he's got Jenkins and Tyran Robinson with him in the backfield. Got Reggie Mosley to our far side. You got to keep an eye on him because he's a threat to score any time that he's on the field. Bonner again to Carlos Johnson, who fumbles, managed to scoot up. Four first down and more brought out, out across midfield to about the 49-yard line of the Indians. Pretty much a carbon copy of the first play that they ran, and uh, great concentration by number seven, Carlos Johnson. On the As soon as the ball met his hands, he kind of uh, bobbled it around a little bit and just showed great concentration, pulled the ball in, and uh, moved it upfield for a first down. Two plays and two passes for the Blazers in this offensive series. Bonners again in the shotgun. I think the Blazers probably plan to pass a lot today. Yeah, they need to set the offensive tone early and get some points on the board. Bonner drops back, throws over the middle, completes the running back, Aaron Jenkins. Jenkins is out, another first down, and he's run out of bounds at about the 20 yard line of the Indians. Well, in case these uh, Catawba fans didn't know, that's exactly what number 14 Aaron Jenkins can do. I mean, just after he catches the ball, you just get a taste of how fast he is, and he turns it upfield, another Blazer first down. This Blazer offense is punishing this top-ranked Indian defense. Three plays, and we've already moved the ball well downfield. The ball is spotted on the 23-yard line. First down, Blazers. Bonner's in the shotgun again with two receivers near and uh, one on the far side. Michael Greer goes in motion, number two. Bonner hands off to Jenkins. Jenkins through the middle, gets maybe a, uh, look at that, squeezing through to get an extra couple yards. He's out uh, to about the 15 yard line. Nice run there by number, uh, excuse me, that was 15 on that play. That was a handoff to CJ Lofton. That's interesting. <laughs> Lofton's now back out as a receiver. Robinson and Jenkins in the backfield. Bonner still in shotgun. Second down and two Blazers. Ooh, Bonner almost had that picked off by number 11 for the Indians. That's Darius Morris. He's a senior linebacker for Catawba, 6'5", 220 pounds out of Batesburg, South Carolina. And uh, Early in this first quarter, Robin, it looks like Carlos Johnson has been uh, Dusty's favorite target. He's already thrown to him three times. That time, he kind of just telegraphed the pass, and number 11, Darius Morris, got a hand on it. First third down of the day for the Blazers, third down and two. High snap, Bonner recovers. 
Should be. I guess we'll see if that's enough for a first down. It's Jenkins up the middle. It appears to be a first down by Aaron Jenkins. 12.58 to go here in the first quarter. Just underway here at Baysmore Hyder Stadium. Well, Robin, we have to mention just the uh, enormous performance that Aaron Jenkins has been uh, has been putting on all season long. He uh, re reached over 1,200 yards on the season, making him only the third player in Valdosta Blazer football history to do so. And uh, he looks like he's going to continue to do this through the playoffs. It was a first down for the Blazers. Ball on the 13-yard line. Bonner is still in the shotgun formation. Got three receivers on the far side, one near. Excellent protection by the offensive line. Jenkins gets nowhere. A tackle was made by number 53, Todd McComb, for the Indians of Catawba. No gain on the play for the Blazers. Second down and 10, ball still on the 13-yard line. Blazers threatening here early in the first quarter against this top-ranked defense of the uh, Indians. Well, second down in here, Robin. If I'm Chris Hatcher, I'm going to throw to the end zone, and I would just throw a little fade route out there to number four, Reggie Mosley, and get his hand, you know, get his, get the ball in his hands early. Excellent protection again from the Blazer offensive line. Bonner throws, caught at his knees by number seven. Again, Carlos Johnson for the Blazers. That should be right at the first down mark. We'll have to see how they call it. Nice little sliding catch there by number seven, Carlos Johnson. As we look here, he had three receivers to his left, looked that way, didn't see anything that he liked, so he throws back to his right by number seven, Carlos Johnson. He just slides in there and makes a nice catch close to the first down mark. Third down and one for the Blazers on their own, excuse me, on the uh, Indians four yard line, so close here early in the first quarter from a touchdown. Well, Robin, what do you do here? Do you go for the first down on a running play or do you go for the end zone? I don't know if Jenkins made it. Looks like there it might looks be like a fumble. fumble. There is a fumble, Indians football. Wow. It's that mistakes you were talking about in the opening, Mike. Exactly. Blazers cannot make mistakes and expect to win this football game. Exactly. Aaron Jenkins did have a couple fumbles last week against Fort Valley State. And if we're going to win this, this game and advance to the semifinals, you cannot make those kind of mistakes. A strong, impressive opening drive by the Blazers. They marched all the way down the field and were right on the doorstep knocking on Catawba. And uh, a fumble by Aaron Jenkins brings out the Blazer defense. Momentum Indians way as uh, the freshman quarterback, Luke Samples for the Indians comes out. He's in the pocket. Hands off to, I believe that was number Number 30, that's Rodney Wallace. He's a freshman tailback, 5'10", 230 pounds. He's out of Bainburg, South Carolina. Two yard gain on the play, second down and eight coming up for the Indians deep in their own territory on their own six yard line after a fumble by Blazers running back, number 14, Aaron Jenkins. Samples, hands off again, and again, no gain as the Blazer defense closes in quick there. Black Swarm defense coming up big right there. That was number 92, Todd Regal on the tackle. And uh, Robin, we know this uh, Catawba Indian offense is, is equally as potent as this Blazer offense. So it's important for this uh, for the Blazer defensive squad to set the tone and let them know that they came to play today. As I said, Luke Samples is a freshman. He's 6'3", 210 pounds out of Elkin, North Carolina. He's just a freshman, Mike. He's still got three years left to go with this Indians team. Right. Third down and eight for the Indians. Looks like first pass coming up. And he over, overthrew his re intended receiver. That's number 10, Nick Means. And the Indians will have to punt from deep in their own territory here on fourth down. Good series for the Blazer defense. Three and out right there. And uh, number 16 for the Indians. Luke Samples looked a little shaky on his first pass attempt and just overthrew his receiver to the far sideline. Back to receive the punt for the Blazers is the transfer student from UGA, number two, Michael Greer. And punting for the Indians is number 12, Matt Gross. Oh, pressure. Punt on. is blocked in the end zone. That should be a nice two points on the board for the Blazers. And it is. Blazer special teams come up huge right there. And as a matter of fact, I think that's number 15, C.J. Lofton, that got in there on the penetration and got his hand on the punt. C.J.'s our man of many talents, isn't he? Yeah. 
All right, well now the Indians will kick off to the Blazers. So not exactly how they wanted to get on the scoreboard first with a safety, but it's two points and Valdosta State will take it. 9.54 to go here in the first quarter. Score is Blazers two, Indians nothing. And uh, as we're getting set for the, for the kickoff, I just want to take a minute and uh, read off some of our uh, players that made the all Gulf South Conference first team on offense. Uh, actually, Reggie Mosley was a dual winner uh, as a receiver and also as a special team return specialist. Also on that first team offensive squad are CJ Lofton, Aaron Jenkins, Bill Epps, Jason King, and Dusty Bonner. On the defensive side of the ball for the first team, we have Reggie Cockrum, Mike Fowler, and number three, Seth Dickerson. That just goes to show how much talent we have, not only on our powerful offense, but on both sides of the football. Exactly, 14 players named to the All Gulf South Conference team. So it appeared as uh, on the opening drive, Valdosta fumbled, and it seemed that momentum was, sw momentum was swinging the Indians' way. But uh, after that uh, block punt in the end zone, resulting in a safety, Valdosta's looking to do some positive things on offense. Well, you know Hatcher's in that huddle right now telling his team no more turnovers. And here they come back on the field, the Indians and the Blazers, back to receive the kickoff for the Blazers. Receiver number four, that's Reggie Mosley, and also Michael Greer is back, the transfer student from UGA. Set to kick off again is number 86. That's Danny Jenkins. He's a junior 6'5", 195 pounds out of Kannapolis, North Carolina. Hey, isn't that where the Earnhardts live? I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> Reggie's got the, got the uh, kickoff. Tackle at his own 35-yard line. Yeah, good, good tackle on special teams right there by number three, Maurice Simpskins. And the Blazer offense is back on the field. And here comes the leader, Dusty Bonner, hoping to have more success on this drive. Two receivers near and far for the Blazers. Only Jenkins in the backfield next to Bonner. And Bonner is in the shotgun formation. Robin, what Chris Hatcher calls this offensive set is the 92 set. They drop both of the tight ends, and they have four receivers wide. Across the middle, complete to number four, Reggie Mosley. Reggie, who's brought down by an entire swarm of Indians. First man to put the uh, hit on uh, Reggie Mosley was number 53, Todd McComb. That's the second tackle that he's already been involved in. So uh, looks like number 53, Todd McComb, is a presence to be reckoned with. Ball is spotted at the 41-yard line. Got a second down and six coming up for the Blazers. You got to like that play calling by Coach Chris Hatcher, though. You got to get your uh, your key players, you know, involved early. Get the ball in their hands early and. Uh, get rid of all those uh, butterflies. Excellent protection from the offensive line. Bonner throws over the middle, complete to tight end, 15 C.J. Lofton. That's going to be close to a first down. I believe he'll be about a yard short on the play. As we take a look at this replay, Bonner drops back. He's looking to the far sideline, doesn't see anything he likes, and just dumps it over the middle to number 15, C.J. Lofton. He's going to be short by two yards. It's going to bring up third and two for the Blazers. Got two receivers on the far side, and Carlos Johnson, his, his favorite receiver so far today on this near side. And Bonner throws. Short pass out to Jenkins, who does not get the first down. I believe he's still about a yard short. Yep, he was stopped short, hit made by number 13, Corey Reese. And the punting unit comes on for both teams. Punting for the Blazers today is number 46. That's Brent Palma. So both the defensive units for Valdosta and Catawba look pretty strong here in the opening of the first quarter. Back to receive for the Indians is number two, Cedric Squirewell. Oh. Palma gets off a very short punt. It was almost blocked. Takes a good Indians bounce, where it's finally stopped at the uh, about the 47-yard line of the Indians. Excellent uh, start for them on offense here. Yeah, they're going to get excellent field position out of there. Not a good special teams play for the Blazers. Uh, Brent Palma kind of fumbled the, the, the snap and then had pressure coming from number 27, Ryan Norman. And uh, it was all he could do just to get the kick off. It's going to result in excellent field position for the Catawba Indians as they start on their own 48-yard line. A tough battle already here for the Blazers. Samples 
Fakes the handoff, runs the reverse around the side. He's got two Blazer defenders chasing him. Finally knocked out of bounds by number 32. That's Reggie Cochran for the Blazers. And these Catawba fans are pumped up. Yes, well, generally, uh, you see defenders kind of letting up a little bit on the quarterback running towards the sideline. But uh, number 32, Reggie Cockrum, had uh, no mercy for a uh, quarterback from Catawba, number 16, and uh, just laid a vicious hit out to him on this near sideline. Second down and a short one for the Indians. Samples in the pocket. Hands off and uh, to Wallace, and Wallace should have the first down for the Indians. And he does, they're moving the chains. An excellent start to this game by the uh, Catawba Indians. Blazer fans starting to get a little concerned. Seven minutes and the clock is running left here in the first quarter. Indians on the move against this Blazer defense. Samples is in the pocket. Fakes the handoff, throws. Outside, complete to number 10. That's Nick Means. Means finally brought down out of bounds by number three. That's said Dickerson. Huge gain and first down for the Indians. Just a busted play right there by the Blazer defense. Number 26, Derek Braxton for the Blazers. As you see right here, Luke Samples drops back, looks to his right side. And right here you see number 26, Derek Braxton gamble and try to go for the interception. The reception is made and the receiver turns it up to the field. and. Uh, the Indians look posed to score here early in the first quarter. Samples, hands off to number 23. That's Marcus Hicks, defensive back. Excuse me, Marcus Bland, the fullback. Coach Kirby Smart, the defensive coordinator for the Blazers, can't be too happy right now. Well, Robin, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe that a team, no team at all this year has uh, scored before Valdosta, scored a touchdown before Valdosta has. So it's really critical that the Blazer defense step up and shut this Catawba offense down. Hand off to number 30, Rodney Wallace, the tailback. He's tackled at about the eight yard line of the Blazers. It's going to bring up third down and seven for Catawba Indians. Indians threatening here early in this in early in this first quarter. Excuse me, it's third and three. Catawba fans on their feet cheering on this Indian team. Samples hands Draw off to play. number thirty, and he's in for the touchdown. That's number thirty, Rodney Wallace, the freshman tailback. And Catawba is on the board here with 5.17 to go in the first quarter. All right, as we take a look at this uh, replay, just fooled all of the Blazer defenders. A draw play ran to number 30 right there. That's Wallace. Had one man to beat, and he can just not bring him down. It's a touchdown for the Catawba Indians. On for the point after is number 12, Matt Gross. Kick is up, and it's good. So with 5.17 to go here in the first quarter, the score, Indians seven, Blazers two. A touchdown for the Indians by number 30, Rodney Wallace, and the two points for the Blazers came on a safety in the end zone. Kind of a surprising start to this uh, second round playoff game for the Blazers today. Right, Robin. As you said, this is playoff football, and all season long, Valdosta has rolled over their opponents. So for Catawba to come in here and score early on the Blazers, uh, it's got to be a little bit disheartening. And you can just, I mean, after that, you know that we're in for a good ball game here today at Baysmore Hyder Stadium. Catawba fans pumped, Blazer fans not. And the Blazers <laughs> are back on the field here, ready to receive the kickoff back is number four, Reggie Mosley, and number 14, Aaron Jenkins. A pumped Catawba team is ready to kick off. Yeah, they are, they're excited. That's what we need here for the Blazers is just a big team on special team, you know, a big play on special teams that can really switch the momentum around. If these special team defenders can, uh, can throw just one block for Reggie Mosley, you know he can take it the distance. It goes to Reggie Mosley. 
Mosley running around, runs right into a wall of defenders. Stops short right there at his own 15-yard line. Not what uh, what uh, the Blazers had hoped for there on a return from Reggie Mosley. Yeah, Reggie Mosley just had no room to his near sideline and was just trying to cut back across the field, going to the far sideline, and was met by a wall of Catawba defenders. And Bonner trots, trots back on the field, trying to get something going for this Blazer offense with five minutes to go here in the first quarter. Bonner's got Jenkins next to him in the backfield, got three receivers on the far side, and C.J. Lofton is here on the near side. Bonner drops back, throws, oh. intercepted by number eight. That's Nick Hopper, a junior, 5'10", 170 pounds, out of Shelby, North Carolina, and these Catawba fans are rocking. Yeah, they Check are. Check it out, Bonner throws. Just completely picked. Had his the pass was intended for Reggie Mosley, and uh, number eight for the Catawba was just waiting on it. And Robin, this is a critical point right here. This is what we talked about in the opening. If, uh, if the Blazers aren't going to be able to limit these turnovers and, and have something positive happen on offense, then Catawba could easily run away with this game. Second turnover here in the first quarter. Indians are moving again down deep in Blazer territory. Bumble. A fumble. We need to come up with it. Oh. And we don't. We don't come up with it. They recover the ball back on their own on the uh, Blazer about 12 yard line, and uh, turnover, and they still get it back. Well, that could have been huge right there. Would have got uh, Dusty Bonner off the hook and made up for that interception that he just threw. But instead, the Indians have new life, and they. Uh, Lost a couple of yards on the play, second down and 12. The young uh, quarterback, Samples, trying to get his team going to get another score here on this Blazer defense early in this game. Samples is in the pocket. He's got two receivers near and one far. He throws out wide, caught and touchdown. That's number two, Cedric Squirewell, the wide receiver, junior 5'11" from Ridgeway, South Carolina, and quick as that, Indians 13, Blazers 2. Wow, this Catawba Indian has just come out here and stunned the fans at Baysmore Hyder Stadium. A couple uh, unfortunate turnovers for the Blazers and uh, results in a touchdown for the Catawba Indians. Coming on for the point after is number 12, that's Matt Gross. Kick is up, and it's good. So with 4.17 to go here in the first quarter, the score, Indians 14, Blazers 2, and I believe, Mike, exactly one minute has come off the, uh, off the scoreboard since the Indians scored their first touchdown. Exactly. Well, these two early scores right here have got uh, the Catawba fans fired up. They're all on their feet, and uh, they're just an electrifying crowd here. All right, just want to remind our viewers, you can get your dose of nostalgia every Sunday night on B91, 90.9 FM, as Skip Gildersleeve brings you three hours of the best of college radio's past. Call 333-5661 to get in your request. That's less we forget every Sunday night from 9 p.m. to midnight on B91. Blazer fans trying to cheer on this uh, team, already down 14-2, to two, still in the first quarter. Back to receive the kickoff for the Blazers, number four, Reggie Mosley, and number 14, Aaron Jenkins. 14 to two is the score here. Blazers down by 12 points. Robin, Coach Chris Hasser has to just be pulling his hair out on the sideline. This is definitely not <laughs> the way that uh, he expected things to go here early in the first quarter. Got to play turnover free ball and so far we haven't done that. Exactly. Kick is up and it goes once again to Reggie Mosley. See if Reggie can break through for something positive this time. Mm. Almost does, but he doesn't. <laughs> Down at the uh, their own 28-yard line is Reggie. It's only a matter of time before Reggie Mosley does break one of those. So uh, hopefully with a little persistence, that will wind up in some positive things for the Blazers. So the Blazer offense, the powerful air raid offense, which hasn't been so powerful yet today, is back on the field. Bonner is in shotgun with Jenkins next to him. He's got two receivers near and far. This homegrown Vadasta product, Bonner, trying to get something going for this Vadasta State team today. He hands off to number 14, Aaron Jenkins. Jenkins gets nowhere, maybe gained a yard, if anything. 
That tackle was made by number 53, Todd McComb, and he's just all over the place today for the Catawba defense. That's not a bad call for uh, Coach Critch Hasser right there. I mean, Aaron Jenkins is a solid running back. You know what he can do. So, I mean, it's smart football to establish that running game and get him going. Second down and seven. Bonner looking to pass. He's scrambling, passes over the middle, complete to Aaron Jenkins. Jenkins out near the first down marker. I think he'll be about a yard short, though. Finally hauled down by number 32, Sean McBride. He's a 6'1 uh, senior. 215 pounds out of Sumter, South Carolina. As we take a look at the replay, Bosters, Bonner's looking over the middle, kind of has to elude a defender and dumps it off to number 14, Aaron Jenkins. It is third down and one. Jenkins up the middle, and he should, he does, have the first down for the Blazers. It would have been detrimental for the Blazers to go three and out here, Robin, so at least we get one first down and move the chains, and hopefully we can put some points on the board. Three minutes on the clock, and it is running. Left to go here in the first quarter. Tied in, C.J. Lofton and Carlos Johnson on the near side. Mosley and the transfer, Michael Greer, on the far side. Jenkins next to Bonner, and Bonner drops back. He's getting great protection from his uh, linemen today. He's now on the run, throws out wide, complete to C.J. Lofton. C.J. tries to fake out the defender and doesn't do so. It's brought down at about the 46-yard line or so. The tackle made by number six, Jamonte Battle. You're right, Robin. Bonner had all the time in the world to uh, to make a pass, and uh, just must be great coverage by this Catawba secondary because none of his receivers were open. It seems like every play on this offensive drive is just being really – it's just real hard on the Blazers. It's not, it's not flowing right now for right. some reason. Bonner drops back. He looks over the middle, complete for a first down to Carlos Johnson. Brought down at the Indians' 43-yard line. And the Blazers are finally starting to move the ball a little bit here. Well, this is exactly what we need. Number seven, Carlos Johnson has, you know, been the only highlight so far in this game. And uh, he's caught about four passes and he gets a first down catch right there. A minute 57 to go in the opening quarter. Blazers down 14 to two to the Indians from Catawba. Bonner. Pressure coming. Pressure coming and he is sacked. He's sacked back across midfield at the Blazers' own 44-yard line. That's got to be at least a 10-yard loss on that play. Yep. He was just gang tackled right there by number 11, Darius Morris, and also number 96, Richard Scott. Chris Hatcher does not look happy right now. Had to be a blown assignment right there. I mean, they were, you know, virtually untouched and came in there and got the sack on Dusty Bonner. A long third down and 21. You know this is going to be a pass for the Blazers. Okay, we've got three receivers to our near side. Abram Booty comes in the game to transfer from LSU. And number four, Reggie Mosley is put out to the far side. Pressure again, and uh, Bonner just has to throw it away. Somebody on the offensive line, after starting out so good with excellent protection for Bonner, missed their assignment again. And Bonner running for his life in the backfield. Three and out, and the Blazers are going to have to punt on this series. Well, it looks like they're staying in. It might have been an, an error on the scoreboard. It, second down on the previous play, ah, so this brings up third and 21. Let's see if the offensive line can pick up who they're supposed to pick up this time. Pressure coming again. Bonner throws downfield. Out of bounds, un unable for uh, number 81 Abram Booty to catch. Valdosta fans not liking what they're seeing so far, so the Blazers will have to punt, and on to punt for them is number 46, Brent Palma. One minute exactly on the scoreboard here. Yeah, the Blazer offensive line is just going to have to do a better job of uh, providing some protection for Dusty Bonner. If he doesn't have the time back there to throw and make a catch, then uh, this offense is not going to be able to do very much at all today. Cedric Squirewell back and gets nowhere. Excellent coverage by the special teams for the Blazers. That was number 47, Wesley Brown in on the tackle. Ball is going to be spotted at about the 13-yard uh, line of the Indians, deep in their own territory. They come out here. Well, Robin, if we're going to have a chance today, this Blazer defensive squad, the Black Swarm needs to step up, dig in deep, and, uh, and come up with a stop here for, for the Blazers. Luke Samples trots back to the line. He's going to have one receiver near and one far. We've got two guys behind them in the backfield. 
Looking to his near side, that's number 10, Nick Means. Pass completed by Samples right there. Nice tackle by number 26, that's Derek Braxton for the Black Swarm defense. Clock is running with 36 seconds to go in the first quarter here. Kirby Smart, the defensive coordinator for the Blazers, calling in his plays to his defense. Okay, now they switch it up. Number seven, O.J. Lennon comes to our near side, and number two, Cedric Squirewell to the far side. Second down and five. And the big man, number 44, that's Reggie Rhodes with the tackle. Just a quick handoff right there to uh, Wallace by Samples, and uh, the front line for this defensive unit came up big right there on that stop. So it is third down and four, and the Blazers really need a stop here. Catawba fans on their feet, and so are the Blazer fans. That's going to be the end of the first quarter. At the end of the first quarter, it is Indians 14, Blazers 2. We'll be right back with second quarter action here on VSU TV. Valdosta State University, Georgia's regional partner, is the cultural crossroads of South Georgia. Whether it's the Valdosta Symphony Orchestra, the VSU Art Gallery, or musical theater on Jekyll Island, university programs provide numerous opportunities for you to enjoy the arts. The College of the Arts annually provides hundreds of artistic experiences on campus and throughout the region, building momentum for the millennium, the arts at VSU. Welcome back to Baysmore Hyder Stadium. The start of the second quarter, the Blazers are down to the Indians of Catawba, 14 to two. The Indians have the ball on their own 19 yard line. It is third down and four, a big possession in the early in this game. Ooh! Excellent tackle, number 33. That's Mylon Brazell just came up and put a punishing hit on the Catawba defender excuse me, the Catawba receiver. As we watch here, Luke Samples rolls to his right. Watch here as number 33, Mylon Brazell, just levels him. Blazers get just what they need, a punt, and they're going to get the ball back. And back to receive is number two. That's Michael Greer. Robin, that's a big play right there. Anytime on defense when you have one of your boys come up and put a huge hit on somebody, you know, that gets the defense pumped up, and the momentum might just be swinging towards Valdosta if we can do something here. Punting is number 85 for the Indians. That's number 86, excuse me, that's Danny Jenkins. Back to receive for Valdosta is number two, Michael Greer. Pressure. The punt, a horrible punt. It may go 10 yards. The Blazers are going to get excellent field position on the Indians about their 25-yard line, and we've got a gift here. We've got to do something with it. Exactly. Good, good play right here. Uh, we've got pressure in on the punter, and uh, this is exactly what these Valdosta Blazer fans have been looking for. We just got a score from the other... Uh, quarterfinal game. The uh, Saginaw Valley is up on Grand Valley, seven to nothing. We will play, the winner of this game plays the winner of that game. And both of those teams are in Michigan, so it's a long trek for whichever team goes to play there. First down and 10 from the Indians 27 yard line. Blazers, Bonner looks, throws out wide. Complete to number 15, that's CJ Lofton. Nice little toss out there by uh, number 17, Dusty Bonner. So we take a look at this replay. D Bonner drops back, looking over the middle, and then decides to throw out here to his uh, right side, number 15, C.J. Lofton. Good catch right there by C.J. It's going to bring up second and five for the Blazers. Ball spotted on the uh, Indians' 22-yard line. Blazers have got to score on this play. Hand off to number 14, that's Aaron, or excuse me, that's uh, Tyron Robinson. Number 20. He may have gotten a yard or two. They're calling it third down and one, a huge third down for the Blazers here. They've got to, they've got to convert this. Well, Robin, this is pretty much a no-brainer for Chris Hatcher. Hand the ball off to number 14, Aaron Jenkins, and let him get the first down for your club. Bonner is in shotgun. He hands off to Aaron Jenkins. Jenkins is through for the first down. Good lead block right there for Jenkins as he picks up the first down for the Blazers. With the exception of the two sacks on Bonner, the uh, offensive line has not let anybody through. They've done a really good job protecting Bonner and helping out the, uh, the running backs. So we take a look at the 
replay number 20, Tyran Robinson gives a great lead block for number 14, Aaron Jenkins, as we get the first down. And uh, we're in the Indian red zone right here, and we need to put some points on the board. Bonner gets the play from Hatcher. Hands off to Tyran Robinson. Robinson gets nowhere. Tackled by number 55, that's Sean Sanders, a senior out of Raleigh, North Carolina. If we take a look at Dusty getting his uh, call from the sideline. Second down and 10. It's kind of ironic, Robin, looking here at the first quarter stats. Possession time, Valdosta had possession of the ball for nine minutes and 34 seconds, as opposed to Catawba only holding the ball for five minutes and 26 seconds. And still they lead 14 to two. Bonner's looking, throws Let's to, go the, to the, end the corner. Zone. That's a touchdown. Oh! CJ misses what should have been a touchdown. He might have been just barely overthrown right there by Dusty Bonner, but uh, it was obvious who his target was, and I thought that was going to be six for the Blazers. It brings up third down. Another crucial third down. Got two receivers near and far, only Jenkins with Bonner in the backfield. Catawba fans on their feet, rooting on their defense. Bonner gets all day to throw. Over the middle, touchdown Blazers. The good old Valdosta High combo of Reggie Mosley and Dusty Bonner. Results in six points for the Blazers. With 12.20 to go here in the first half. Blazers are now only down 14 to eight. Hope to add to that with an extra point by number 37, Reed Bethay. Blazer fans are on their feet thrilled. That's right, Robin. Well, it is critical that we get, did get some points on the board there. And I mean, Reggie Mosley has, has just done this all year long. Um, last game against Fort Valley State, uh, he caught his 32nd career touchdown. That sets a record here at Valdosta State. So let's make that record 33 as uh, Reggie Mosley gets six. The kick was good. So with 12.20 to go here in the first half, Catawba Indians 14, Valdosta State Blazers nine. After a sluggish start by the Blazers, that was a nice series, and we got a touchdown. We needed one badly, and we got one. Yeah, we did. Well, Robin, this Monday night, November 26th, the VSU Department of Music presents the faculty recital of Todd Markey on double bass at 7.30 p.m. in Whitehead Auditorium. For more information on this recital, as well as other upcoming musical events, contact the Department of Music at 333-5804. Blazers trot back on the field. They got to be feeling good after getting that touchdown. Yeah. Um, those turnovers were, were pretty crucial in the early on in the first quarter. I mean, uh, Catawba scored one, one touchdown, and Bonner threw an interception, and a minute later they put another six points on the board. So it was real important for the, to the, for the Blazers to get a touchdown and to get back in this game. Kicking off of the Blazers is number 28. That's Bryce Harrington. And back to receive is number two, Cedric Squirewell, and number seven, O.J. Lennon for the Indians. We'll have to see how this touchdown affects this Blazer team. They should be feeling a lot better. They're only five points behind now. Flag on the play. It looks like it's going to be delay of game on the Blazers. Yep, the uh, play clock says zero. Number 12 for the Blazers, that is uh, Fred Dunn, was late coming on the field, and that's going to result in uh, moving number 28, Bryce Harrington, back five yards for his kickoff. So there's another costly mistake for the Blazers, and that's those are the kind of things that you can just not do in the playoffs. Playoffs, you've got to put, got to play perfect ball because everybody else is going to be playing perfect ball. Exactly. One mistake, and it could result in a loss. And of course, we know a loss means you got to go home. <laughs> All right, we'll try it again here. Play clock on about 15 seconds. Short kick. Kick goes to number 10. That's Nick Means. Means gets out to midfield, brought down at about the 50-yard line. Excellent return right there by number 10, Nick Means. He was finally brought down by number 16, Dennis Frizel, and he's all the way out to midfield. That wasn't very good coverage by the Blazer special teams that time. No, we'll, it wasn't. We'll have to see how the defense can, uh, can do here. 
It's a short kick right there, and you see Nick Means just cuts back to his left. There's a hole and just uh, runs untouched all the way up to midfield. Samples in the pocket. He is brought down for a huge loss. That's number 98. Dwayne Smith, the defensive tackle junior out of West Point, Mississippi. Well, huge play right there by number 98, Dwayne Smith. They're going to spot the ball back at the Indians' own 46-yard line. A loss of about four or five on the play. Yep, second down and 15. That's nice to get the Indians in a hole early here in this exactly. series. 11.35 and the clock is running here in the first half. We got Means and Lennon over here to our near side, and there's the throw to Lennon. That's number 33 for the Blazer defense coming up to make the stop. Mylon Brazell. Another nice tackle in the open field for the Blazers. They gained about two on the play. Third down and 13. The Blazers really need a nice stop here. As I see number 13, Arthel Brown on the on the field for the Blazers. He's going to be matched up against these receivers here on our near side. And uh, he's a sophomore, hasn't had that much playing time. So let's see if uh, this Catawba team is going to try to exploit our young secondary. Pass dropped by number 17, Arnold Gaither. He had a definite first down for the Indians, but he could not hang on. And so the Indians are going to have to punt. We had a huge break right there. Number 26, Derek Braxton slipped on his coverage. And... Uh, Number 17 for Catawba was wide open. Arnold Gaithier could have had the touchdown right there if he would have made that catch. Back to receive for the Blazers. Number two, Michael Greer. And punting for the Indians, that's number 86, Danny Jenkins. Flag on the play. So we see both teams pointing at each other, saying, you know, that you went off sides. But let's see what the call is going to be here. Looks like it will be on Valdosta. But it's not enough to give them a first down. So they'll just move the ball forward five yards. Still have to punt because it was fourth down and uh, 13. Now it's fourth down and eight. So Michael Greer will take a few steps back to return this punt. 10.47 on the clock here in the second quarter. Greer gets the punt, comes up, and goes out of bounds at about the 30-yard line. So, 10.39 on the clock. The score is Indians 14, Blazers 9 here in the first half of play. Pretty nice turn of events right here for the Blazers. They score, and then they have their defense come up with a big stop, and they get the ball out here at the 30 with pretty good field position. So, uh, as we hear a chorus of applause from the Blazers, Blazer fans, hopefully we can... Uh, Get things going, start clicking on all cylinders and get some positive things happening for this Blazer team. Bonner's got two receivers near and far. Got Jenkins next to him in the backfield. He's in the shotgun. Sends number two, Michael Greer, in motion. And Jenkins is sacked in the backfield for a loss. That's number 62, David Huey, senior defensive lineman out of Hamlet, North Carolina. As we take a look at the replay, I mean, number 62 just saw this play coming a mile away and was all over Aaron Jenkins in the backfield and uh, results in a four-yard loss for the Blazers. It's going to bring up second and 14. Hatcher trying to get anything going here. There's that 92 set again. We've got four receivers wide. Jenkins goes out into the flat, and Bonner's going to toss it out there to him. Jenkins scoots up, goes out of bounds at about the... 34, 35 yard line. So we're going to have a considerable amount of work to do to pick up this first down as we look at the replay. Bonner just throws a quick pass out here to the flag to Aaron Jenkins. And uh, after he makes the catch, does a nice job of just running east to west and picking up some extra yardage after the catch. Fans on their feet. It's a third down and eight. Crucial third down here early in this game for the Blazers. Got two receivers near and tied in CJ Loft on the far side. Bonner He's looking looks, for Michael Greer. Throws deep. Can Greer get it? No, he cannot. Bonner overthrew, and the pass is incomplete. Disappointing three and out there for the Blazers. Yeah, it was. 
In come the punting units, and the Blazers punter is number 46. That's Brent Palma. Back to return for Catawba is uh, number two, Cedric Squirewell. Palma gets the punt away. That's going to end up, ooh. It's going to take a nice blazer bounce down to about the 18-yard line, the Indians' 18-yard line. And that's where it will be down. So with 9.38 to go here in the second quarter, the score, Catawba Indians 14, Varasa State Blazers 9. The winner of this game will play either Grand Valley State or Saginaw Valley State. That game is going on right now. The last we heard, Saginaw was leading 7 to nothing. We'll keep you informed as uh, this game goes on. First down and 10 from their own 19-yard line. Luke Samples hands off to number 30. That's Rodney Wallace. Gets taken down by Tobias Carter, Seth Dickerson, and the big man, Mike Fowler. Good coverage right there by the linebacking core for Valdosta State. As we see Wallace with a handoff, and uh, Tobias Carter meets him at the line, and he's uh, finished off by number three, Seth Dickerson. No gain on the play, so it's going to be second down and 10. It was a penalty, excuse me, against Catawba. We didn't see the flag on the field. It's false start on the offense. Second down, so it's going to be second down and should be second 15. Second and 10. Clock running. We're under nine and a half minutes to go in the first half. Got number seven, O.J. Lennon to the far side and number two, Cedric Squirewell to the near side. Pass thrown out of bounds. Intended for number two, that's a Cedric Squire. Well, he seems to be in every play for the Indians on yeah, offense or special teams. Looks like it was just a breakdown in communication right there for the Indians of Catawba. Number 16, Luke Samples, just threw to the near sideline, side and there was no one around to catch the ball. Kirby Smart sending in instructions to his defensive team. Third down and nine. Indians on their own 20-yard line. A big play here. Samples is back to throw, and he does. Long pass. Almost caught, but dropped by Squirewell. Great defense right there. That was uh, number 33, Mylon Brazell on the coverage. And uh, they were bumping a little bit, but uh, no flag on the play. Just good, clean coverage right there. Brazell is a sophomore out of Macon, Georgia, and he's been in several defensive plays for the Blazers, doing a really good job today. Back to receive for the Blazers on this punt. It's number two, Michael Greer. And punting is, once again, Danny Jenkins. Jenkins. Yeah, Jenkins. <laughs> Just over nine minutes to go here in the second quarter. A horrible punt. Greer calls for a fair catch. He's going to let it roll. And it rolls, not even out to midfield, down at the Indians. About 47, 46 yard line. So good field position for the Blazers. See if they can capitalize. Right, as you were uh, saying earlier, Robin, we're going to either have to play the winner of Grand Valley State or Saginaw Valley State. That is if we win today. And uh, both of those are two Michigan teams. Um, I just happened to be from Grand Rapids, Michigan, uh, where Grand Valley State is. And I was talking to my mom earlier this morning, and she said that uh, Grand Valley's quarterback is injured and out for the season. So that might be uh, an advantage for us looking at the playoffs. Or into, whoever wins this game. Yeah, huh? into yeah. the semifinals. Right. First down and 10 from the 47 yard line. Bonner looking to pass, and he does complete. Nice catch. That is the mass media major from here at Valdosta State, Reggie Mosley. Great hands right there by number four, Reggie Mosley. That tackle was made by number one for, uh, as we take a look at this replay, Bonner drops back and just throws a bullet into the coverage right here, and you can just see concentration by Reggie Mosley as he brings in that catch. Good job, Reggie, and it's first down for the Blazers. They're out to the Indians' 32-yard line and on the move. Bonner's got Tyran Robinson and Jenkins with him in the backfield. Reggie's on the near side. Abram Booty, the LSU transfer, and C.J. Lofton, tied in slash receiver on the far. Bonner having to scoot to get out of the way, motioning downfield. Ball is caught. That is Abram Booty, number 81, the LSU transfer. Let's see if they rule it a catch. Some the Catawba fans are booing. Let's see if they rule it a catch. 
Nice grab right there by uh, number one, 81, Abram Booty. Bonner had to uh, elude a defender and roll out to his right side. And they're not gonna, they're not gonna call it a completion. They're gonna say that Booty was already on the ground. So with 8:20 to go here, second down and 10 for Bonner and the Blazers. The sun's kind of gone in behind the clouds here. And the wind's, wind's kind of picking up. up as yeah. well. Bonner looking to pass that good coverage from his offensive line. He throws out of bounds. It was intended for Reggie Mosley, but he overthrew him. Pressure was coming by the Catawba defenders right there. And uh, I think Bonner just made a smart decision and threw it out of play. Hatcher's trying to figure out what he can do to get some more points on the board for the Blazers. Third down and 10 for the Blazers on the Indians' 32-yard line. Eight minutes and 15 seconds to go in the first half action. The Blazers are down by five, trying to get some more points on the board here. Bonner's got Jenkins next to him in the backfield. Bonner's looking to pass, and he throws towards the end zone. Abram Booty's open. open. Touchdown, Blazers. The LSU transfer, number 81, Abram Booty, from Bonner to Booty. Touchdown Blazers, with eight minutes and seven seconds to go, and the Blazers have reclaimed the lead. They were once up two to nothing. Okay, as we take a look at this replay, Bonner drops back, and what uh, number one, 81, Abram Booty does, he runs a little stop and go. He stops like he's gonna run a short route and then goes to the end zone, just burns his defender and uh, makes a nice grab in the end zone Re as the Blazers retake the lead. But they on for the point after, it's up, it's good. Blazers have reclaimed the lead, 16 to 14 over the Catawba Indians. A lot of happy fans here in Vadasta, Georgia. Fans on their feet, thrilled that the Blazers have come back to take the lead. Now that early safety comes, you know, into play, it becomes even even bigger than it was early on in the first quarter because uh, without that, that score would be tied right now at 14 apiece. Well, everyone knows that uh, Christmas is right around the corner. It's time to get into that holiday spirit. And the Continuing Education Office is offering a crash course in gift wrapping for children in grades two through six on Saturday, December 1st from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. To receive registration information, call the Continuing Education Department at 245-6484. I don't know if you can wrap presents, Mike, but I myself am really bad at it, so. No, I just let my mom wrap my <laughs> presents. I don't ever. Yeah, I'm not very good at it. <laughs> Looks like about a five-year-old wrapped it when I tried yeah. to wrap presents. All right, the Blazers are trotting back on the field. Bryce Harrington getting set to kick off, back to receive number two and number seven. For the Indians, number two is Cedric Squirewell and number seven, O.J. Lennon. I think the tension's kind of going out of the air a little bit since the Blazers have scored a couple yes, touchdowns has. here. It was getting kind of tense there for a while. Everybody's feeling good though. Blazers are on top 16 to 14. And Harrington about set to kick off. Kick Good goes deep. deep. Kick. Number two, Squire Wells got it. Runs into his own oh, man, no. cuts back. He has an open field in front of him. Let's see if Mighty can catch him. And the punter, look at Brent Palma do his tackling thing. He gets uh, Squire Wells out of bounds just across midfield. Kind of a safe kind of a safety uh, tackle there for the Blazers if Palma hadn't gotten it. As we take a look at this replay, uh, Squirewell looks like he's going to uh, run up to the left-hand side, sees a little congestion in there, and then decides to squirt out here to the right-hand side on the near sideline and had nothing but daylight as he runs up the sideline, and that uh, tackle was made by the, the kicker, number 28, Bryce Harrington. Wallace jumps over and gets about three yards or so. Tackle made by number three, Seth Dickerson. He's one of the co-captains here on the uh, Blazer team. Clock is running at about seven minutes and 30, uh, let's see, 34 seconds to go in the first half of action here. Blazers on top, 16 to 14. But the Indians have the ball and they've crossed into Blazer territory. Need a big stop here by this Blazer Black Swarm defense. It's gonna bring up second and seven for the Indians. Samples, fakes the handoff. He throws out wide, overthrows his uh, intended receiver. That was number 17, Arnold Gaither. 
And just good coverage out there by the, the Blazer secondary. Number 47, Wesley Brown, and also number 13, Arthel Brown, were out there. So it's third down and seven. Big play here if you're either team. The uh, Indians would love to uh, keep moving downfield. And of course, the Blazers would love to get the ball back here and try to get another score before the end of the half. Exactly. 7-12 on the clock, third down and seven. The ball is on the uh, Blazer 42-yard line. Big third down play here. Samples looking to throw, throws out wide. Oh, great play, great play right there by number 26. Derek Braxton for the Blazers. We gotta take a look at this replay. Well, uh, we don't have the replay, but uh, number 26, Derek Braxton, uh, actually got turned around on that play and just had great hands and batted it away from the Catawba defender. Kirby Smart looks very pleased. And back to receive now for the Blazers, number two, Michael Greer. Jenkins punting. Nice kick. Greer calls for a fair catch at the Blazer 13-yard line or so. So with six minutes and 58 seconds left here in the first half of action, the Vadasa State Blazers 16, Catawba Indians 14. And as this uh, Blazer special teams come off the field, they hear it from the fans here at Baysmore Hyder Stadium, bringing them to their feet. And uh, after some early momentum by uh, the Catawba Indians, it looks like Valdosta is back on track and they're starting to click on all cylinders. Bonner's got Jenkins next to him in the backfield. He's got Reggie Mosey on this side and three guys, including tight end uh, C.J. Lofton on the far side. Bonner's in shotgun. Bonner's looking to pass. He throws out wide. Caught by Michael Greer. Greer nudges out of bounds at about the 32-yard line. Nice grab right there. It's going to result in the Blazer first down. Well, we do have this replay. So Bonner drops back. He's uh, actually looking towards the middle of the field and decides to throw to his right. Waiting out there to catch the pass is number two, Michael Greer. Not really nothing he can do after the catch, but he does pick up a Blazer first down. Blazers on the move with 6.49 to go here in the second quarter. Bonner hands off to Jenkins. Jenkins scooting through, picks up some yards, and a flag comes flying on the play. Could have been a late hit. It might be holding on uh, the Blazers. We'll have to see which one they call. Might bring it back. The call is holding, and it's on the Blazers. That'll back us up 10 yards. So that's going to bring up second and 15. So we look at the replay right in here. I believe it is uh, number 77. That is Jason King for the Blazer offensive line that was called for holding. Should be second down and 20 here for the Blazers. Ball, oh. ball on their own 21 yard line. Bonner makes a couple changes at the line of scrimmage. Sends number 81, Abram Booty, in motion. Over the middle to number two. Ooh. Just threw it out of the reach of the hands of my, number two, Michael Greer. A big third down coming up for the Blazers. Third down, and it's still 20. That penalty costly for this Blazer team. Very costly penalty. Hatcher and uh, the backup quarterback there you see next to Hatcher, that was number five, that's Buster Faulkner. Calling in the, uh, the signals and the plays to Dusty Bonner. Second down and 20. Blazers on their own 21 yard line. It's gonna be huge right here if the Blazers can pick up this first down on third and 20. Intercepted. Interception, interception. again. A costly turnover for the Blazers. The Indians will have the ball in Blazer territory at about the 43-yard line. That interception was made by number six, Jamonte Battle. He's a six-foot sophomore, 190 pounds, out of Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. As we take a look at this replay, Bonner's looking to the right side and uh, just kind of telegraphed it out there. Number six, Jamonte Battle was just waiting on it, and Abram Booty went from receiver to defensive back to make that tackle. That's the fifth 
interception in the last six quarters for Dusty Bonner. That's not Harlan Hill award winning no, numbers from a year ago. No, it's not. So the Indians take over now in the Blazer territory. <laughs> Samples keeps it and gets nowhere. No gain on the play. Actually, I believe that was going to be a, an option play. Samples faked a quick handoff, and then he had uh, number 30, Rodney Wallace, out to his left-hand side. Was probably going to pitch it out there, but uh, just didn't happen as the, the Blazer defense collapsed on him. Second down and nine for the Indians. Ball on the Blazer 40-yard line. Samples got two guys behind him in the backfield. Got one receiver near and far. Fakes Squire well out here to the near side, and that's who he's looking towards. Oh. Excellent coverage by number 26. That's Derek Braxton again coming up huge. Great coverage by this Blazer secondary today. Well, number 16 quarterback for uh, the Catawba Indians, Luke Samples just threw it up there for uh, number two Squirewell to go up and get it. And uh, you just see the athleticism of number 26, Derek Braxton, as he just went up and knocked the ball out of his hands. Third down and nine for the Indians. 5.41 on the clock here in, this, in the uh, second quarter action. Samples back looking to throw, throws out wide, just out of reach. That was intended receiver. for number uh, 10, Nick Means. Samples threw it just out of his reach, and uh, Blazers actually catch a break and get a little bit lucky here. And uh, Indians unable to capitalize on the Dusty Bonner interception. So on to punt is Danny Jenkins, and back to receive for the Blazers, number two, Michael Greer. Excellent job by the Blazer Black Swarm defense. The punt. Good little angled kick right there by number 86, Aaron, or excuse me, Danny Jenkins. The ball is downed. They're going to mark it at the uh, Blazer 15 yard line. So it's 5.28 to go in the first half action. Blazer still leading 16 to 14 over the Indians from Catawba. And here comes the offensive unit led by quarterback number 17, Dusty Bonner. Well, Robin, I'm sure Coach, Coach Chris Hassard does not want to go into the locker room with the scores that sits right now at 16 to 14. The Blazers uh, have a fresh set of downs here, and they're in business. They need to get another six points put on the board before we go into halftime. Bonner's got Robinson and Jenkins with him in the backfield. He's got Reggie and Carlos on this side. He hands off to Tyran Robinson, who may get a couple yards, but he's stuffed by the entire Indians defense. He may have gained a couple yards on the play. Yeah, Tyran Robinson, he's a, he's a freshman running back, 5'9", 185 pounds out of Moultrie, Georgia. And uh, he's been getting some very good playing time here this season. And uh, I know that we're going to be able to expect some good things from him in the future. Second down and six. Blazers on their own 19-yard line. Number 60, Keith Goss, goes out of the game, and uh, they bring in number 57, Torrey Howard. Torrey Howard did some time the last two games for Bill Epps, who had an injured knee, and now he's in. I wonder if, uh, if Goss is hurt. Second down and six. Catawba fans chant defense. Bonner looking to throw. Oh. Pass through the hands of C.J. Lofton. And picked up by number one, that's Jamel Jackson for the Indians. Another Bonner interception. This one you can't say is completely his fault. No, it really wasn't his fault. Uh, we take a look at the replay. Uh, Bonner sees number 15, C.J. Lofton, cutting across the middle of the field. He wants to hit him over here to this near sideline. Lofton does get his hands on the ball, but it's tipped and uh, actually goes to Reggie Mosley's defender, number one, Jamel Jackson. And things just have not been going Bonner's way for sure as, as, you know, as far as his individual statistics are concerned. So the Indians have the ball deep in Blazer territory on the Blazer 27-yard line. Fresh set of downs, first and 10. And you know that uh, Hatcher would sure love for the clock to run out here at the end of the quarter. Yeah, he would. But there's still four and a half minutes to go, so that's probably not possible. That pass thrown out to number 10, complete by Luke Samples. Uh, tackle was made by number 26, Derek Braxton. Second down and four coming up for the Indians. Catawba fans are thrilled. They're on their feet. 
Samples in the pocket. He's got one guy near and far. He hands off to Wallace. Wallace barrels up through the middle. Very close to the first down marker. We'll have to see how they mark it. I believe he might be just shy of a first down. No, he did get it. Kirby Smart not looking too happy, but it is first down. Ball is marked on the Blazer 22-yard line, and the Indians are in business here late in the first half. Robin, there's still plenty of time before we go to the half. The Black Swarm defense needs to step up right here, stop the Catawba Indians, and then hopefully get the ball back and uh, score some touchdowns of their own. No gain on the play. Second down and eight. 313 and the clock is running here left to go in the first half of action from Baysmore Hyder Stadium. All right, Robin, it's second and eight. We need a big play on defense right here. Samples Pressure lo coming. Looks to throw and he throws behind his intended receiver. That was number 23, Marcus Bland. Junior fullback out of Garner, North Carolina. Number one, Tobias Carter made sure that uh, he wasn't going to make a play on that ball. Take a look at the replay. Pressure coming. Samples gets off the pass. And uh, Tobias Carter makes sure he puts his defender on the ground. Kirby Smart calling in the play to his defense. A big third down and eight from the Blazer 15-yard line. Indians threatening here. Need a big stop by the Blazer Black Swarm defense. And uh, they jump off sides. The question was, were they drawn off sides? We'll have to see how the refs call it. The one who jumped was number 58, Vitari Lions. This is the first time this year these refs have worked together. So we'll have to see how, how they uh, handle each other. So far, they've done a pretty good job. The call is offsides on the Blazers. Instead of a third down and eight, it's now a third down and three. Blazers just gave a nice big uh, early Christmas present to the Catawba Indians. It's number two, Cedric Squirewell, as well as number 17, Arnold Gaither, trot onto the field. If I'm the Catawba Indians right now, you've got to throw to the end zone. So it is third down and three from the 10 yard line. Samples looking to throw and he does. Caught by number two, that is Squirewell. Down near the goal line at about the two or one yard line. A tackle made by number 45, Mike Fowler. And it looks like we have a player down on the defensive side of the ball. So we see here number 47, Wesley Brown and number 45, Mike Fowler, get tangled up. Mike Fowler actually puts a hit on number 47, uh, Wesley Brown, and I believe that's why he's injured. Kirby Smart doesn't know what to think. Got a player down the field, so we're going to step aside and take a timeout. We'll be right back with more Blazer football on VSU TV. Batteries are flat, but okay, you know what? That guy. Look. Okay, girls, it's 3 o'clock. What is he looking at? They're looking at us. What do you think? <laughs> oh, it's so obvious. Captain Obvious has scored again. Oh, he wouldn't say something. Oh, he's really going to down. Hi. Hi. Hey, guys. Hi. Welcome back to Baysmore Hyder Stadium. The injured player was number 47, Wesley Brown. He walked off the field on his own power. Good sign there for the Blazer defense. Now back to the business at hand. First down and goal from the two yard line for the Indians. Need a big Blazer defensive stand. Let's see if we can get it. There's one play. That was good. Good job by the Blazer defense. They stuffed him right at the line of scrimmage. Try to be optimistic here, but uh, Catawba has three more chances to put it in the end zone before we go to half with two minutes left. Kirby is uh, signaling into his defense. Clock just hit two minutes and it is running. Left to go here in the first half. Second down and two. Or I guess you could say second down and goal. 
Another handoff, and again, he doesn't fumble. get in fumble. Fumble, and the Blazers recover it. Huge yes. play, Blazers. huge play on defense right there. Forced a fumble, that was uh, number 23 for Catawba with the carry, Marcus Bland. Number 45, Mike Fowler just comes and picks up the fumble. Blazer fans are happy, and uh, surprisingly enough, the Indian fans are not. <laughs> 144 to go here in the game. New life now for the Blazers. They recovered a fumble. Yeah, you can hear a pin drop over here on this uh, Catawba side of the stands after that fumble recovery by number 45, Mike Fowler. Blazer fans take a deep breath, as do all of us. As Dusty Bonner sprints onto the field, I would guess that uh, Coach Hatcher has our offensive squad in somewhat of a hurry-up kind of set. Bonner hands off to Jenkins, who scoots up through the middle. Watch and he's what he running. can do with the ball. Look at him go. He turns on the speed. He is up out to almost the 30-yard line. Excellent run by number 14, Aaron Jenkins. Well, Robin, you see right there why Aaron Jenkins is all Gulf South Conference right there. Take a look at the replay. Good blocking up front, and just watch him dance through the Catawba defense and uh, bring it up to the far sideline. Move the chains. It's a VSU first down. Look at C.J. Lofton there blocking. Yes, we should have him uh, tied in receiver slash blocker. C.J. Lofton doing a great job there. First down, Blazers. And we have a lot of players on this team who are very versatile. Minute 36 to go here in the first half. Bonner hands off to Jenkins again. Jenkins scoots up the middle. May get uh, four or five or so on the carry. Worked the first time, so why not try it again and uh, exactly. take a look at this replay. Once again, good blocking up front, and uh, Aaron Jenkins just keeps his shoulders moving from east to west and uh, picks up some positive yardage for the Blazers. Clock is running, a minute 15 to go here in the first half of action. Blazers on top of the Catawba Indians, 16 to 14, hoping to add some more points before halftime. Bonner hands off again to Jenkins. Jenkins out near the first down marker. He may be a yard or so short. That tackle made by, Nambi, by number 91 for Catawba. Peter Kalowinski. They got some tough names to pronounce, <laughs> don't they? Yeah, they do. 42 seconds and running on the clock here in the first half of action. Bonner is in shotgun. Third and one here, I'm looking for a handoff. He fakes the handoff. Bonner still got the ball, he's scrambling. He's running, he's gonna have the first down, and he runs out of bounds. That's a, a late, late hit. hit, where's the flag? This ref team does not call the late flag, and Blazer fans are very unhappy. You know, we mentioned that this team was, uh, this uh, umpiring team, their first time working together, somebody should have made that call. That's just poor officiating right there. Number 11, Darius Morris for Catawba, blatantly pushed uh, Dusty Bonner after he was outside of the sideline. Take a look at the replay here. Bonner's looking to his near side, doesn't really see anything he wants. He feels the pressure coming, and he has to scramble for the first down. Now let's watch right here if he's out of bounds before he's hit. It's pretty uh, it close. Was, uh, yeah, it was too close to call right there. Bonner not known for his wheels, but doing a good job trying to get his team the first down, and he does. Ball is now on the Blazers on 43-yard line. Jenkins running, got an open path. Oh, Missed tackle go, from go. behind. Jenkins is out looking for the touchdown, pushed out of bounds at about the Indians 15 yard line. 10 seconds to go on the clock. Could we have another touchdown here? It only takes one play, so hopefully we can. Now let's watch here this replay. He gets a great block up front by number 77. That is Jason King. And then now watch number seven, Carlos Johnson and number four, Reggie Mosley. They don't just catch the ball, they block for their running back downfield. And uh, just a great run by number 14, Aaron Jenkins. They mark the ball out of bounds at the Indians' 19-yard line. So we are 19 yards from that elusive end zone. 10 seconds to go here. Got time for a couple plays. Love to get some points on the board. If anything, we should be able to get a field goal out of this. Yeah, Chris Hatcher has to be uh, feeling pretty good about his team if we can go into halftime with a score of uh, what? 16 to 14. Yeah, 16 to 14 now. There's a timeout on the field right now. If you take a look at Hatcher coaching Bonner, one great quarterback in Vodasa State history to another. Before the closing plays here in the first half, on Wednesday, November 28th, the International Film Series continues with Rashomon. 
The film begins at 7 p.m. in the University Center Theater. For more information, contact the Office of International Programs at 333-7410. Look at that blazer band, they're pumped. Blazer band not in uniform because it still is the Thanksgiving holidays at VSU. They're coming with a casual look today. <laughs> Bonner comes back in. Hope, hopefully he's got touchdown, touchdown on his mind with 10 seconds to go here in the first half. Fans on both sides of the field on their feet. Bonner's got Jenkins with him in the backfield. Got three receivers on the far side and Reggie Mosley on the near side. Bonner throws 81, for the end zone. Oh. Bonner just threw it too short. Booty trapped it. So with five seconds to go here, Blazers are going to have second down and ten. It was, it was obvious Blazers were thinking end zone touchdown on that play. Looks like they're going to come in for the field goal. In comes number 37, Reed Buffet, to attempt it. Should be about, let's see, this will be about a 35, 36-yard field goal for Reed Buffet. Smart play by here, right here by Coach Hatcher. I mean, instead of going for it, the touchdown on fourth down, just go ahead and get the get the three points with the field goal and go into the go into the locker room with a score of 19 to 14. The Taba uh, is called a timeout here. Trying to ice our kicker here, make Rebethay nervous. But Rebethay is a pretty good field goal kicker. We'll have to see if this works. This plan by the uh, Catawba Indians works. Uh, the VSU TV crew would like to extend a big thank you to Papa John's Pizza for supplying us lunch today as uh, well as throughout the football season. They've been out here for every home game uh, providing us with a great lunch as we work the football games here. We'll try to get you an updated score on that Grand Valley Saginaw State game as soon as possible here. Let you know how the other team's going. I didn't want to mention that uh, early in the game when Valdosta State was down, but uh, if the Blazers have to fly up to Michigan to play either Grand Valley or Saginaw Valley State, the weather up north is going to be a huge factor in that game. <laughs> Georgia boys not used to the cold weather, huh? Yeah, they better bring their mittens and gloves with them. <laughs> Another timeout called by Catawba. Timeout on the field, so we'll take a timeout as well and be right back with more Blazer football here on VSU TV. My Youth for Understanding experience was the best thing I've ever done in my entire life. If you want to learn a language, this is how you do it. You meet a whole new family that are willing to accept you and take you in. You only live once, so you do it, try it, live it. Go Global! Welcome back to Baysmore Hodder Stadium. Reed Bethay on for a field goal with five seconds to go here in the second quarter. Field goal is up. Looks like it's good. And it is. Time has run out on the clock. And we just learned, before we go to break here, we just learned that uh, Saginaw Valley is on top of Grand Valley in another of the uh, playoff games today, 17 to 13 at halftime in that game. And halftime at this game, we're on top, the Vodafone State Blazers 19 to 14 over the Catawba Indians. We'll be right back with the second half action here on VSU TV. Immerse yourself in another culture and another way of life. Experience everything life has to offer you. Embark on your own course of adventure as part of a summer study program in London, Paris, Italy, or Russia. Studying abroad is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. The memories and friendships gained will be a life-changing experience. Savor the moments and culture. Discover the world around you. Be part of a summer study program in London, Paris, Italy, or Russia. For more information about summer study programs abroad, please contact the Center for International Programs at 333-7410. Takes the snap, wants to throw, getting pressure. Corner got the key man. Touchdown! 
Bonner looking to throw it, looking to throw it out here. Got CJ. Touchdown out off the state. Long count. There's the snap looking over the middle, looking for Tarpley. He's there. Tarpley makes the catch. Touchdown, Lee Tarpley. Oh, yes. 220 to go. Bonner gets the snap. Going deep downfield. Got Booty. Touchdown, Booty. Baller's going to throw it. End zone. Mosley. Touchdown. Baller going to throw it. Point of the end zone. Richie. Touchdown, Mosley. This is going to throw it. Wants to go downfield. He's looking. Boston. And this is catches made at the 10-5. Touchdown, Blazer. That's the change in the play at the line of scrimmage, it appears. And there's the snap. Now he wants to throw it. Downfield. End zone. CJ. Touchdown, Blazer. He's trying to punch it in again. Baller's going to throw. Looking. Wants to go deep. Downfield. Corner got Reggie at the 10-5. Touchdown, Blazer. Bonner wants to go downfield, got Reggie at the 10, 5, touchdown Blazers! There he comes! Rear comes in motion, stops, goes back, look for him over the middle maybe, Dusty though fakes it, rolling this way, Bonner's going to roll the 25 to 20, 15, 10, 5, Dusty Bonner from 21 yards, where did that come from? <laughs> Dusty will be quarterback sneaking here for his touchdown, and yes he will. Dusty wants to throw, looking out here in the corner, looking for... Reggie, or excuse me, Carlos Johnson, touchdown. Bonner wants to throw it, looking, 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 looking. Pressure, he's forced out of the pocket. He's still looking, still looking. In zone, touchdown, CJ, what a catch. Oh, man, what a catch. Seven seconds to go in the half. We're maybe trying to steal one right here. Bonner wants to throw. They force him out of the pocket. He's in flush. Throws it downfield. Got three guys down there. Snap, Bonner, what's the throw, Greer, no, locked in, touchdown, what a catch. Here's the snap, Bonner, looking, looking, over the middle, touchdown, Reggie Mosley. Dusty takes the hand off, wants to throw, downfield, got Reggie open, 45, oh, yeah. Reggie, up, to catch him, 10, five. touchdown, Dusty gets the snap, wants to throw, downfield, over the middle, touchdown, that was the state. With a minute 25 to go, Bonner wants to throw, corner of the end zone, Booty, touchdown. Dusty quickly out here to Greer, it's going to be a double pass looking, throw back to Dusty, at the 15-10, touchdown, Hunter, catch, listen to the people. some pretzels? No, I'm about to some cookies or something. Like what? I don't know. About an orange. Forget it. Hey, Jay, you got anything? Don't ask Jay. Why not? Jay never has me. What's up with that? Are you on a diet or something? Yeah, a diet. Jay's on a diet. That's all right, man. We, we understand. My mom's on a diet. <laughs> Welcome back to Baysmore Hyder Stadium as we're just about set for second half action here in our uh, second round playoff game with the Catawba Indians and the Vodosta State Blazers. Mike Jabor and Robin Espain here with you and Mike's got some first half stats for us. Well Robin, the two stats that stand out most to me are the total offense and the penalties. Catawba has been flawless with zero penalties as opposed to Valdosta having four penalties resulting in 21 yards. And then when you look at the total offense, Catawba's ran four, 34 plays for a total of 75 yards, while VSU has ran 46 plays for 267 yards. So if we didn't have those early turnovers in the first half, then the score probably would not be as close as it is right now, but Austin State would probably be enjoying a larger lead. Yeah, it would definitely be a whole new ball game then, wouldn't it? All right, ready to kick off for the Blazers. Number 28, that's Bryce Harrington. Back to receive number seven. That's O.J. Lennon, and number two, Cedric Squirewell. The kick goes to Lennon in the end zone. 
He downs it and will have a touchback, and the Indians will bring the ball out to their own 20-yard line. Strong kickoff. We'll let you know when we hear any more information about the Grand Valley and Saginaw Valley game. We'll keep you posted. Last we heard they were. Uh, Saginaw was leading Grand Valley 17 to 13 at the half. So they should be getting underway just like we are here in Valdosta, Georgia. And here come the Indians on their first offensive possession of the second half. Samples is in the pocket. He's got two receivers on the near side, nobody on the far side. Number 10, Nick Means goes into motion and uh, Samples is looking to his side. Ooh. He is drilled. Who made that play? That's number three, said Dickerson. Dickerson was out here during the half uh, practicing and warming up, and uh, he laid a pop there on. Uh, Take a look at the replay. Nick Means has a ball in his hands, and said Dickerson just makes him pay. Incomplete pass right there. It's going to bring up second and ten for the Catawba Indians. Nice aggressive defensive play there by the Blazers. The ball is on the 20-yard line. Samples, hands off. I believe that's Wallace. He may get three or four yards. Actually, that Robin, that uh, handoff was to number 21, Tony Hawkins. He's a 6'2", 230-pound sophomore out of Fayetteville, North Carolina. I believe that's his first carry of the game. Third down and a five for the Indians. Catawba fans on their feet, cheering their team on. Blazer fans on their feet, cheering on this Blazer Black Swarm defense. Got three receivers coming to the near side for Catawba. The play is dead, should be false start, or it could be delay of game. We'll have to see what the refs say. Blazers are applauding, so it's probably against the Indians. Let's see. It is a false start on the Indians. It's going to back them up five yards, so we go from third down and five to third down and ten. And there's the first penalty of the game for the Indians. Well, that's a good start here for this Blazer defense. It's important for this Black Swarm defense to set the tone here. It'd be huge for us to get a three and out right here and uh, get the ball back in Dusty Bonner's hands. So it is third down and 10. Samples rolling to his right. He is on the ball and he is brought down from behind. That's number 58, Fatari Lions, the defensive end, junior. 6'4", 250 pounds out of Gray, Georgia. Big defensive play for the Blazers. As we take a look at this replay, Luke Samples rolls out here to his right. He was looking for Nick Means, didn't see anything he liked and decided that he was going to keep the ball. Number 58, Vitari Lyons brings him down. And the line, uh, Indians are forced to punt. Again, back for the Blazers, that's number two, Michael Greer. And punting is Danny Jenkins. Number 86 for the Indians. 13-17 on the clock and it's running here in the third quarter, just underway at Baysmore Hyder Stadium. The kick. Pressure in on the kicker. Locked. Nice kick that he got off, though. Michael Greer set to return at about his own 35. Greer makes it back to about the 44-yard line of the Blazers. Blazers got a nice starting position here, almost at midfield. Check out Michael Greer here. Gets the ball and just scoots up for any yardage he can. Nice job. So the Blazers will start off with pretty good field position here, and they're going to start first and 10 at their own 44-yard line. Bonner's got Jenkins and Robinson in the backfield with him. Reggie Moses on the near side. C.J. Lofton and Carlos Johnson at the far side. Handoff goes to Jenkins. Jenkins is out, and he's still on his feet. Look at him cut through defenders. Finally brought down way across midfield, down to the Indians' 38-yard line. And you know something, Mike? The uh, the two rushing plays at the end of the first half really set the tone with the rushing game at Aaron Jenkins. He sure did. Take a look at this replay. Now Aaron Jenkins moves out. There's one tackler gets his hand on him, and uh, Aaron Jenkins is just what you'd call a slippery runner. Eludes a couple tackles right there and just keeps his feet churning for some positive yardage. First down, Blazers on the move at the Indians' 38-yard line. Clock running with 12 and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter. Bonner hands off to Tyron Robinson, who's juking. Look at him go. Blows off one tackle and another. Oh, nice move. Another first down for the Blazers. Robinson down to almost the 20-yard line. 
Nice run right there by number 20, Tyran Robinson, the promising freshman. Take a look, this handoff goes here and he starts out to the near side. Cuts it back right here to the right hand side. Out there blocking for him is number 77. And then watch his spin move he puts on at the end of this play to elude another tackler. That guy came on from behind him and he still didn't get him. So another first down for the Blazers. Hand off to Jenkins. Three plays and three rushes for the Blazers early here in the third quarter. That time Jenkins may have got a couple yards. Should be second down in about eight yards. So a better job of uh, tackling up front by the Catawba defensive line. Robinson goes out, in comes Michael Greer, receiver. Looks like the Blazers are going to go with three receivers on the far side. Reggie Mosley, the sole receiver on this side, and only Jenkins in the backfield with Bonner. Hatcher's uh, giving some messages to Bonner, telling him what to do for this play. Bonner's in shotgun. He drops back, looking to pass. Has plenty of time. Now he turns on the, uh, the runners, and he's up. He may have gotten four or five yards on that play. Well, Dusty Bonner is not known as a great scrambling quarterback, but uh, didn't really see what anything that he liked out there to the far side and just tucked it under and, uh, and ran for about five yards on the play. It's going to bring up third and three now for the Blazers. A big third down here early in this third quarter action, 11 minutes on the clock, and it is running. Two receivers near and far. Should be a pass play, it looks like. Flag Flags, on the play. Flags come flying. I think it was So Bonner's got offsides. a free play here. Touchdown. Touchdown, we'll have to see. The receivers, have, or the uh, umpires have not said anything, so the penalty might be on the Blazers, we'll have to see. Number 77 is motioning as if the touchdown was not good. No, instead it, it is. It was offsides on the defense, touchdown Blazers. Well, this worked out to uh, Dusty Bonner's advantage. Catawba's offsides and he has a free play. Just buys some time out there in the pocket and throws a strike right there to number 15, C.J. Lofton. 10 minutes and 48 seconds to go. Blazers are now on top 25 to 14 over Catawba Indians. Reed Bethay with the point after. It's up and it's good. Make that 26 to 14. Blazers lead the Catawba Indians. 10.48 to go here in the third quarter. And you know what, Mike? We were talking about the third quarter is a big quarter. It has been all season long for the Blazers, and we knew we had to come out and get something rolling in this game if the Blazers are going to beat this tough Indian team exactly. today. Exactly. This is exactly what Coach Hatcher wants to see, a strong a strong performance right here in the beginning of the third quarter. And uh, the Blazers are giving these uh, fans here at Baysmore Hodder Stadium a little bit more of what they're used to seeing. The band and the cheerleaders are uh, kicking it, I guess you could say, as the Blazers trot back on the field. Feeling good after that nice touchdown. Ready to kick off to the Indians. Again, we'd like to thank Papa John's Pizza for supplying us with lunch today, as well as all of our home games throughout the regular season. They just do a great job of uh, being a positive presence in the Vadasta community, and we thank them for, for providing us with lunch today. Back to receive for the Indians. The usual, number two, Cedric Squirewell. Number seven, O.J. Lennon. And kicking off is, of course, number 28, Bryce Harrington. We'll have to see how the uh, Indians respond to this Blazer touchdown. See if they can get something going on offense here. The sun is back out. It's getting nice and hot, and the, and the wind has actually died down a little bit here at Baysmore Hodder Stadium. The kick goes to number 10. That's Nick Means. Means is tackled at about the 20-yard line. Good job of coverage by the Blazer special teams unit. Well, you could just tell an extra dose of energy has been uh, injected into this uh, Blazers special teams unit. They're out there just uh, going after the returner. So first down it is for Luke Samples and the Indians offense. Samples comes to the line. He's in the pocket. He's got a receiver near and far and two guys behind him in the backfield. He hands off, or excuse me, he keeps it. He fakes the handoff and he gets nowhere. Maybe a half a yard or so on the play. Yeah, nothing really going on that play. Number 44, Reggie Rhodes, and number 45, Mike Fowler in on the play. So second down and eight. The ball's now on the 22-yard line. The Indians own 22-yard line. It's the Blazer defensive unit looks at the sideline and gets the call from Coach Kirby Smart. Coach Smart's got to be pleased with how his team's come out and played here in the second half. Samples looking to throw, throws out, 
Oh. Just a bad error by number 40. That is Anthony Coulson. Drop pass, just a mental mistake there on the part of the wide receiver. Yes, yeah, so we'll take a look at this replay here. Samples drops back, looking to his left-hand side. And that ball was just hit him right in the hands by Coulson. And, uh, you know, that's one of the cases where you can almost hear the defender coming up behind you. And uh, Coulson just dropped that pass. Brings up third down and eight now for the Indians. They got to get something going here. Yeah, this is really critical. If uh, the Blazer defense forces another three and out, then that might take the wind completely out of the Catawba sails. Nice coverage by the secondary. Mike Fowler, said Dickerson, and Tobias Carter. Great job coverage, and it is three and out. It looks again like he's hurt, too. That's number two, Squirewell, shaking up on that play. Squirewell is a very important part of their team. We've seen him on all different sides of the ball today, so let's hope he's not seriously hurt. He got hit hard from about three different places, and he kind of gingerly limps off the field. Blazer fans applauding the uh, Black Swarm defense effort. And now on to uh, receive the uh, punt for the Blazers. Again, is number two, Michael Greer. Danny Jenkins putt. Nice punt. Greer gets it. He's on the move. He's got some running room. Ooh. Gets out to about the 44-yard line, the Blazers' own 44-yard line, and that's where Dusty Bonner and the Blazer offense is going to start. Crazy-looking fan there. Got his uh, Catawba colors going on. <laughs> that's a Blazer fan, isn't it? He's got the Blazer helmet thing on the side of his head. He's got the uh, Catawba cheerleaders there with him. <laughs> First down and 10, Blazers. Ball on their own 45-yard line. 9.45 to go here in the third quarter. Bonner's in shotgun. Got Jenkins with him in the backfield. Nice quick pitch out to C.J. Lofton. Lofton scoots forward close to a first down. Gain of about nine, nine or so yards on the play. Wind's picking up here as the sun has dipped back behind the clouds here at beautiful Baysmore Hyder Stadium. Yeah, that was just almost like a stop route right there by number 15, C.J. Lofton, just uh, after everyone got off the line of scrimmage, C.J. Lofton just stopped and received a quick pass right there from Dusty Bonner. It's going to bring up second and two now for the Blazers. Two receivers near and far. Bonner's dropping back and he's looking. He's got C.J. Lofton open over the middle. There's Michael Greer instead. Nice block. Michael Greer finally booted out of bounds at about the 10 yard line. Excellent job of uh, catch and run for the uh, transfer from UGA, Michael Greer. As we take a look at this replay, Bonner drops back. He had C.J. Lofton open over the middle as well, but instead elects to throw downfield a little bit further to Michael Greer. Now watch this block coming up here by number seven. Carlos Johnson just frees him up, and Michael Greer is close to coasting all the way into the end zone. There's a player down on the field. I think it's an offensive lineman for VSU. It's number – uh, it's Keith Goss, we we're told. He is a very important part of the offensive line for the Blazers, and he is down, and we're not quite sure what's going on. Looks like he may have a cramp. Or, Well, since uh, Keith Goss is down the field, we'll take a timeout and be right back with more Blazer football on VSU TV. When disaster strikes, who will be there to help? Who will deliver food, clothing, medical supplies? Who will rescue the stranded in communities just like yours? You will, as a member of the Air National Guard. Feel the pride. Get the experience. Join the Air National Guard and fuel your future. Welcome back to uh, Baysmore Hyder Stadium. Keith Goss, the, one of the most important parts of the offensive line for the Blazers, is walking off not on his own power. It's a sad sight for the Blazer. Blazers, I suspect his uh, replacement looks like it is Torrey Howard. We'll have to see how he can do in uh, backup role for Keith Goss. Large, huge loss for the Blazers if he's done. First and 10 now here for the Blazers as they're knocking on Catawba's door here. Ball's on the, bla on the uh, Catawba 10 yard line. I'm so Dusty Bonner, I'm throwing to Reggie Mosley. Instead it's going out here to number two, Michael Greer. And Greer gets nowhere. Virtually no gain on the play, if any. Take a look at the replay here. Bonner drops back and throws 
Just a little quick toss out here into the flat, Michael Greer. And he's met by a wall of defenders upon catching the pass. Really nowhere to go on the play. Second down and goal for the Blazers. The ball is on the Indians' nine-yard line. Catawba fans on this side cheering defense. Robin, look for Reggie Mosley to run a little quick slant through the end zone. Let's see what happens. There he is. He's wide open. Oh. The ball was tipped at the line by number 11. That's Darius Morris, senior linebacker from Batesburg, South Carolina, doing a good job deflecting that Bonner pass. Take a look right here. Jenkins just tried to slide out into the flat, and uh, Bonner was going to dump it off to him, but uh, good hands right there by number 11 for Catawba. So third and goal for the Blazers. Got to be thinking touchdown. They sure don't want a field goal yeah, here, not can. with this tough Catawba team. We can't settle for a field goal here. we got to get six points. Bonner's got Robinson and Jenkins with him. He looking toward the end zone, throws out to Jenkins. Jenkins got tacklers coming. Can he avoid them? And no, he no. can't. He stuffed at about the five yard. So fourth down coming up for the Blazers. And here comes the field goal. You know, I guess we're gonna have to settle for the three points after all. Right, good try there by uh, Dusty Bonner throwing it out to Aaron Jenkins. But uh, as fast as Aaron Jenkins is, there was just no way that he could elude all three of those uh, Catawba defenders. They just kind of collapsed on him. A nice drive by the Blazers. Hopefully it'll end up here with three points. We'll see as Reed Bethay set here for the kick. It's up, it's blocked. Recovered by Reed Bethay. Nice, excuse me, recovered by Michael Greer. And guess who got his hand in on that? It was number 11 for Catawba, Darius Morris. So we'll watch the replay here. 11, Darius Morris just gets up and you see Michael Greer, number two, transfer just to scramble and get on the ball and recover it. So it's uh, first down, the uh, the Indians take over on downs. The ball is spotted at about the 19-yard line of their own, their own 19-yard line. Luke Samples leads his troops out so they can capitalize on uh, the error. Samples is back, looking to throw, and he is. Nice high throw. Caught by number 10. That's Nick Means with uh, Derek Braxton for the Blazer defense on the coverage, and it's a first down for the Indians. Derek Braxton really just didn't have a chance at all to defend this play. As you see him, he's not looking at the ball at all. He's just trying to play it by watching his defender's face and just had no chance of, uh, of breaking that play up. So nice toss there by Luke Samples to the near sideline. And the Indians are moving the ball here. Hand off there to Rodney Wallace, number 30. Mike Fowler comes up with a big stop. Clock is running with 6.54 to go here in the third quarter action. The Blazers are leading the Indians from Catawba 26 to 14. Certainly not a safe lead at all. As I look across the field, Robin, I see number 60 Keith Goss being attended to by the trainers and hopefully he can just uh, get his leg taped up and come back into the game and hopefully he didn't suffer too bad of an injury. Flags down on the field. More than likely going to be a false start. Let's see how they call it. <laughs> it is a false start on the Indians. That backs them up five yards. So after having a flawless first half penalty-wise for the Catawba Indians, they get a Two, two false starts early in the second half. We just received word that the lineman, uh, Keith Goss, number 60, is getting treatment, and he's coming back in the game on the next offensive possession for the Blazers. That's definitely good news for uh, Dusty Bonner and as well as the Blazer team and Blazer fans, as Keith Goss is a very important part of the Blazer offense. Yes, he is. Second down and 14 after the penalty. Another yeah. handoff to Wallace out there, number 30. And he's stuck. Tobias Carter is in there to make that play, and he's pumped up about it. So third down and 14 or 13 is going to be a big third down for the Catawba Indians. Hand off right here, and you see uh, just has to run laterally, and number one, Tobias Carter, also a fellow mass media major, comes up to make the tackle. And it is third down. Actually, they lost a yard on the play. It's third down and 15 from their own 37-yard line. Let's see what Luke Samples can pull out of his bag of tricks here. He's in the shotgun formation. 
think that's one of the first times he's been like that tonight. He throws across the center and throws short. Pass was intended for number two, Cedric Squirewell. So it's punt time, and in come the Blazers and the Indians punting units. This Blazer defense has just come up huge in the second half, and they get a standing ovation from the fans here at Baysmore Hyder Stadium. Very appreciative of the Blazer Black Swarm defense. And back to receive number two. That's Michael Greer. And kicking is, as always, Danny Jenkins, number 86 for the Indians. Punt is a low punt. Greer chases after it, takes a big Indians bounce. And it's finally out of bounds at about the 18-yard line of the Blazers. Not a pretty kick by Jenkins, but it was effective. So with Pins the Blazers back. They're going to start off at their own 18-yard line. So with 5.14 to go here in the third quarter action, the Blazers are on top 26-14 to over the Indians from Catawba. Catawba is in Salisbury, North Carolina. They've made a nice long trek down here to play the Blazers team today. Yeah, they have. Robin, I just want to let our no viewers know, if you don't have anything to, to do this summer, you're like me, you just sit on the couch all summer long, uh, you can try studying abroad in London, Paris, Italy, or Russia. To find out more, um, exploring other countries, call the Office of International Programs at 333-7410. Bonner hands off to Jenkins. He may get a couple yards. <laughs> Keith Goss is not back in the game yet, but he should be here in a few minutes. But he's not back in just yet. He just got off the trainer's table. Just got through getting taped up, so he'll probably uh, stretch out a little bit and loosen up, run a little bit, and we'll probably see him in the next series. Second down and nine for the Blazers on their own 19-yard line. Bonner's got Jenkins with him in the backfield. Michael Greer and Reggie Mosley on the near side. Lofton and Carlos Johnson on the far side. Bonner fakes the handoff, looking to throw downfield. Oh. Almost intercepted by number 53. That's Todd McComb, a fresh, or excuse me, a junior linebacker from Thomasville, North Carolina, and boy, <laughs> that was a uh, could have been a really horrible play there. Yeah, as we look at this replay, Bonner had Aaron Jenkins open over here in the flat, and inside, instead tried to force it to number four Reggie Mosley, and was nearly picked off by number 53 Todd McComb. Hatcher's thinking, whoo, big break on that one. So it's third down and nine for the Blazers, deep in their own territory. Three receivers on the far side, just Mosley on the near side. Bonner's looking to pass. He's got great protection. Throws out wide to Michael Greer. Greer makes the catch. Wide and open. Falls down at about the 44-yard line. Big first down Blazers. Well, I'm sure Michael Greer probably would have rather caught that pass in stride and ran it downfield even further, but great first down. We'll look at the replay here. Bonner looks downfield, has Michael Greer wide open. Throws a strike to him, and uh, that was a great play, but uh, unfortunately it's going to be called back another penalty on the Blazers. As the officials sort this out, we'll see what the call is. The call is... It had to be holding. It is. Holding on the Blazers. Backs us up 10 yards, so instead of a first down and moving the ball downfield, we now have a third down and 19 from their own uh, nine yard line. Another stupid penalty coming up to, to bite the Blazers. 421 on the clock here in the third quarter. Bonner looking to throw. Again, he's got good protection. He's scrambling. He's down near the end zone, scrambling. Throws over the head of uh, his running back, Aaron Jenkins, and the Blazers are gonna have to punt. Well, another costly penalty really, really hurt the Blazers on that play. They had the first down and then some with a catch by Michael Greer, but it was called back by a holding. So that breathe, breathes new life into this Catawba special teams unit. It's got their fans standing on their feet again. and uh, Brent Palma is punting from deep in uh, his own end zone, so about, this, about five, six yards deep. So the Indians will undoubtedly end up with some good field position here. Nice punt. It's about gonna a, take a bounce. About a 48, 49 yard punt. It's still rolling out to midfield, about the 50 yard line, and that's where the Indians offense will take over. Four minutes and three seconds to go here in the third quarter. Blazers on top, 26 to 14. 
Robin, this VSU defense have been, has been very strong so far in the second half, and hopefully they continue, can continue to do so. First down and 10, Indians on uh, the Blazers' 49-yard line. Samples hands off to Wallace, or excuse me, Tony Hawkins, 21. who does a nice front flip through the air. Courtesy of Mike Fowler, number 45. Maybe a couple yard gain on that. So we watch this play. Watch number 45, Mike Fowler just come and just spin number 21 over. Got to love that nice gymnastics, oh, don't yeah. you? So it's second down and eight for the Indians. The Indians really need to capitalize on this. They've got great field position. We'll see if the Black Swarm defense can come up with yet another save for the Blazers. Clock is running. It's at three and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter. Sample's looking to throw, and he does. Pass complete. That's number 10, Nick Means. Number 26, Derek Braxton in on the coverage there for the Blazers. We'll take a look at this replay. And it's almost a carbon copy of the play before when Nick Means got just turned over. Luke Samples throws it out there to number 10, and he goes up and makes the completion. Third down and one. Big third down here for both teams, particularly for the Indians. Fans on both sides on their feet. I'm thinking quarterback sneak. We'll have if to see. If I'm the Catawba head coach, I'm handing off the samples. He's a big back. Oh, no. Number 30. That's uh, Rodney Wallace. Breaks through. Gets a, a lot more than uh, first than uh, one yard needed for the first down. Out to the 21-yard line. And the Indians are really in business now. Eventually brought down by Derek Braxton. We'll take a look at this. He fakes a quick handoff and then pitches out here to uh, number 30, Rodney Samples. Seth Dickerson misses a tackle here. And uh, he cuts it back up, and he's eventually brought down right here by number 26, Derek Braxton. That was pretty much a touchdown saving uh, tackle yeah, it there. Yeah, was. So not a whole lot of, of uh, people left behind him. No, nope, the Indians get a first down and then some, and they're in business here. Samples fakes the hands off. He's running out wide. Has nobody to throw to, but he's running. He gets out to down to the 10-yard line. And That's going to be close to the first down. I yep. believe it is. Yep, another first down for the Indians. Indians fans on this side are thrilled, and Kirby Smart is not. Pretty much a busted play right there by the Indians. I believe uh, Samples was trying to throw out to his uh, left side, uh, number 10, Nick Means, and just good coverage by the Blazers, so instead he keeps it and runs for a first down. First and goal, Indians. Number 10, Nick Means, or excuse me, number 30, Rodney Wallace. Here comes the flag. There's a flag down on the play. We'll take a look at this replay. Now, Robin, number 30, Rodney Samples, or excuse me, Rodney Wallace, and uh, our running back, number 14, Aaron Jenkins, are very, are two very different backs. Aaron Jenkins. They waved off the penalty, so second down and goal from the three-yard line for the Indians. That's going to bring up second and three now for the Indians. Clock is running at a minute 12. Samples keeps it. Quarterback keep. He dives. He might have gotten back to the original line of scrimmage. Looks like he may have lost a yard or two on the play. Good hit put on him right there by number 47, Wesley Brown. As you see here, Samples just keeping this one all the way. Tucks it down. And he's met right here by number 47, Wesley Brown. Clock is running, 46 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Blazers leading 26 to 14. But the Indians are threatening down at the Blazer four yard line. And it's third down and goal. A big third down here for Huge the Indians. Third down. Samples lost it up high. Touchdown. That's number 88. Mark Sintich, the uh, tight end senior from Lawrenceville, Georgia, Georgia boy. Gets the touchdown for the Indians. As we take a look at this replay, fakes a quick handoff, and uh, number 88, Mark Sintich, is just wide open in the end zone. Easy touchdown right there for the Indians of Catawba. On for the point after is number 12. That's Matt Gross. 28 seconds still on the clock. Kick is up, and it's good. So 28 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Blazers leading 26 to 21 over the Indians from Catawba. 
in Salisbury, South uh, North Carolina. Well, Robin, this is exactly what we did not want to happen. Now this gets the crowd back in it. As we look down on the Catawba sideline, it's got the players fired up. They're only down five points now. So uh, this is anybody's game, and uh, Verasa is still going to have to come to play if they want to win today and move on to the semifinals. I wonder if butterflies are kicking in anybody's stomachs right now, probably everybody in the stadium, in particular Chris Hatcher, Dusty Bonner. You know, well, this is playoff football. Every play is critical. Every play is huge. And so if you don't have your game face on today, then you shouldn't have come to the stadium. The Indians getting set to kick off to the Blazers. Back to receive number 31 for the Blazers. That's Demetri Moore and number 14, Aaron Jenkins. And kicking off is, again, the guy who just kicked the point after, number 12. That's this, the senior kicker, Matt Gross. Well, surprisingly, Reggie Mosley is not back to return the kick. We have number 14, Aaron Jenkins, and number 31. That's Demetric Moore. The Indians got their war chant going on here. Here's the kickoff. It's going to be taken by number 31, Demetric Moore. And let's see what he can do with the ball. Oh, he fumbles. Fumbles the ball, and I believe it is going to be Indians ball. Haven't got the official signal yet from the, uh, from the referee. But it did appear that Catawba recovered the fumble, and they have. It is Indians ball with 17 seconds to go here in the third quarter. The Indians have the ball. We take a look at this replay on the return right here. Demetri Moore just gets clogged up and then is just stripped by number three. And the door is just swung immensely towards the Catawba Indians. They have the momentum. I wonder if Hatcher's now rethinking his decision not to have Reggie Mosley back there. So the Indians are in business. First down and 10 from the Blazer 23 yard line, 23 yards away from another touchdown and a lead in this game. Samples back. He's looking to throw. Oof. And he is met by a mob of Blazer defenders, Mike Fowler included. And he gets nowhere on the play. Mike Fowler is just a monster. I would hate to see him coming at me full speed. <laughs> As time runs out here at the end of the third quarter, the score, Blazers 26, the Indians from Catawba 21. It's still anybody's game. We'll be right back with fourth quarter action on BSU TV. Psst, hey, you kids, nobody's looking. Want to go down head first? Kind of like you're flying. Ah, oh, talk about flying. I'll launch you halfway to Aunt Nelda's house. Hey, kids, I got two words for you. Human catapult. These clowns are about as much fun as a Give me a little wuss. Don't Just listen to those losers. losers. Ah, they got the nothing. Blood. Last year, a half million kids were injured at playgrounds by the power of their own imaginations. Please supervise your child. For a free playground safety brochure, contact the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. Welcome back to Baysmore Hodder Stadium for the start of the fourth quarter. An exciting game going on here as the Blazers lead the Catawba Indians only by five. It's still anybody's game, and the Indians are threatening deep in Blazer territory. Samples has the ball. He's throwing for the end zone. Intercepted. Intercepted. Number 26, Derek Braxton. A huge play for the Blazer defense. Yes, Robin. This playoff atmosphere is, is more than apparent. That pass was intended for number seven right there, O.J. Lennon. Take a look at the replay here. Samples drops back. He has some pressure coming right there by Reggie Cockrum. Throws to the end zone, and it looked like he almost was trying to throw it out of the end zone. Instead, number 26, Derek Braxton, comes up with an INT. Nothing can explain how big that play was. Blazer fans are thrilled. It looked like we were about to go down in this game. A huge turnover and a great job by Derek Braxton of the Valdosta Blazer defense. So now we've got first down and 10 from the 20-yard line in, in, in uh, their own territory, Blazers. Blazers need to look and protect the ball. Oh, he skipped it. They're calling that pass complete, even though we can tell oh, from here it was not. There. Even though we can tell it was not, they call it a pass, and they call it complete. Watch this replay. This is underthrown, and he just skips it to Aaron uh, Carlos Johnson. Oh, no, he did Maybe pick he it did. out of the air cleanly. Catawba fans warning something different. Yeah, from up here, it appeared as though it uh, skipped before it reached Carlos Johnson. Second down and eight now from the 22-yard line. Just a short game. Michael Greer grows in motion for the Blazers. There he is, number two, coming across the middle. 
Michael Greer does a good job protecting the ball. He gets about three or four more yards on the play. Tackle was made by number eight, Nick Hopper. And number 53, Todd McComb, as we take a look at this replay. Bonner's just waiting patiently, and here comes Michael Greer streaking across the middle of the field. You know the Blazers want to score again, but they've got to be thinking protect the football. A turnover right now would be deadly. Yeah, it would. Third down and three from their own 27-yard line. The Blazers looking for a first down here. Big third down. I think Bonner's even trying to draw them off sides. Yep, he is. <laughs> and Bonner's dropping back. Pressure coming. Caught by number 15, C.J. Lofton. Should be a Blazer first down. We'll see. That's yeah, definitely going to be a first down for the Blazers. That tackle was made by number 32, Sean McBride for Catawba. Dusty just sits back and throws just enough to get the first down. And guess who's back in the game helping protect Dusty Bonner? You got it, Keith Goss is back in the game, and we're thrilled to see that. Exactly. He's the cornerstone of this uh, Blazer offensive line, so definitely good news to see him back in the lineup. Blazers in business. They're on 32-yard line. First down, handoff to Aaron Jenkins. Jenkins gets about two or three on the play. 13 minutes, and the clock is running here in the fourth quarter. Second down and eight for the Blazers from their own 34-yard line. Need to get out to the 42 for a first down. Surprisingly, Robin, we haven't seen that many deep balls thrown down the field, and I wonder if Chris Hatcher has got one of those up his sleeve right here on second and eight. Instead, he hands off to Aaron Jenkins. Jenkins does a good job protecting the football with both hands and scoots forward for a couple more yards. Still, it's going to be a third down and about five or six. Little draw play right here. He fakes a quick throw and then hands off to number 14, Aaron Jenkins. Good play by the Catawba Indians up front to stop him. It is third down and six. Catawba fans on their feet cheering defense. Blazer fans, of course, offense. I'd like to see a nice pass here from Bonner. We'll have to see what we get. If I'm Dusty, I'm either looking at number two, or Michael Greer, number four, Reggie Mosley. C.J. Lofton wide open in the flat. Lofton down, out of bounds at almost the 45-yard line, and a Blazer first down. Nice play right there by the Blazers. C.J. Lofton just runs a little curl route, comes over the middle. Picks up the first down and then some for the Blazers, and we're in business here, moving towards midfield. Ball on the 43-yard line. Aaron Jenkins manages to avoid another tackle. He crosses midfield to about the 48-yard line of the Indians. He's going to be close to having another VSU first down. He might have been short by about a yard. You know something, Mike? The Blazers are excellent at running the clock out in the fourth quarter. We sure need to do that today. Second down We need to get two. a touchdown before we think about running the clock out. There's too much time left. Aaron Jenkins moves forward for another Blazer first down. Blazers thinking safe football, and let's move the ball. This series right here is critical for the Catawba Indians. If uh, BSU does put six more points on the board, then uh, they're going to be in a really strange situation, and their defense needs to come up with a stop here if they're going to have a chance here in the fourth quarter. 10.55 on the clock, and it's running left to go in the game. Catawba Indians and VSU Blazers coming down to the wire. Dusty Bonner throws out complete to Michael Greer. Greer with the first down and more. Greer all the way out to the 25-yard line. Blazers are cruising downfield. Nice play right there. I think that's the first time I've ever seen Michael Greer show any emotion after he makes a big catch. Almost a screen play. Just throws a quick one out there to Michael Greer, and he's got his blocker set up in front of him. It's good for a Blazer first down, and it's going to – Bring it up to the Catawba 25-yard line. The important thing, Mike, is to keep that clock running, and it is. It's almost down under 10 minutes to go here in the game. Blazers on the Indians' 25-yard line threatening. Bonner hands off to Jenkins. This time Jenkins goes nowhere. He's met at the line by number 62. It's David Huey. He's a 5'11", 295 senior out of Hamlet, North Carolina. 295, that's a big boy. Yeah, he is. 
responders getting his signals from uh, Buster Faulkner, his backup, and from Coach Hatcher. C.J. Lofton goes out of the game, and number 83, Lee Tarpley, comes in as his replacement at tight end. Lee Tarpley's another Vodasta boy. We'll see what he can do here for the Blazers. Also got number 81, the LSU transfer, Abram Booty, out here to the near side. Bonner fakes the, handoff. fakes the handoff. He's running. Look at Bonner go, running for yards. Down to almost the 20-yard line. Bonner just fakes a handoff right here to Aaron Jenkins and then just keeps it himself. He's not known as that great of a runner, so uh, perhaps Coach Hatcher was trying to switch it up and fool the defense on that play. Lee Tarpley went out and CJ Lofton is back in. I guess he needed a quick break there. Right, another huge third down right here, Robin. Ball on the 21 yard line, third down and six for the Blazers. Bonner. There's Aaron Jenkins. Throwing Aaron Jenkins. Jenkins scooting close to a first down. We'll have to see how they mark it. 8.50 and the clock is running. Let's see, this is a crucial call. See number 60, Keith Goss motioning into the sideline for them to go for it, it is, if they are short. It is fourth down. Is it going to be fourth and one? And the offensive unit stays on. Coach Hatcher's going to gamble here. We're going to go for it. Fans on their feet. Huge play in this game. 8.24 on the clock is running to go in the game. Fourth Bye. down and one for the Blazers on, their, on the Indians' 22-yard line. Wonder if Thess is going to keep this ball. He's in the pocket, so he just might. He calls a timeout. As the volume got turned up here in Baysmore Hyder Stadium. Dusty Bonner calls a timeout. He wants to talk things over. 8.14 on the clock. A flag on the play here. We'll let you know what, what there was. We'll let you know what the result is on that flag as soon as we uh, as soon as we find out. 26 to 24, Blazers leading. The penalty looks to be on the Blazers. Because Catawba fans are cheering. We'll have to see what it is. Kind of an odd flag thrown there. It was thrown by the sideline judge, and uh, I have no idea what this call is going to be. The call is delay of game. Apparently, Bonner did not get the timeout called in time. So instead of a fourth down and one, it's now going to be a fourth down and six. And on comes the kicking unit. Reed Bethay is going to have an extremely long field goal. This is going to be close to a, a uh, probably 35, 40-yard field goal for Reed Bethay. Let's see how he can do it. The clock is running under eight minutes now. Big play here. Oh, the it's kick blocked again. is blocked. It goes to number 20. And he's scooting out to the sidelines. Oh, no. Finally brought out of bounds by number 86. That's Steve Skeen for the Blazers. And the Indians are back in business here. Okay, watch here. The field goal attempt is blocked by number 37, Reed Bethay. Number 20 for Catawba. Picks it up and is running towards the near side. As you see right here, Michael DeGreer, number two, is going to come in. He eludes that tackle. And he's finally brought out of bounds right there by number 86 for Valdosta. That's Steve Skeen, the freshman tied in, in there on special teams. So Valdosta could have put the nail in the coffin there and uh, been close to putting Catawba away. Instead, Catawba is nearly out to near field. And I mean, they're very much still in this game. Catawba moves into Blazer territory across the field to the 49-yard line. It's going to be second down and five for the Indians. And once again, we're calling on the Blazer Black Swarm defense for another big stand. They've done it before. Let's see if they can do it again. Clock is running at 7.10 to go in the game. Samples is in the pocket. Squire well went in motion there on that play. The pocket just collapsed right here on uh, number 16, Luke Samples. Samples gains about uh, three or four. It's going to be third down and probably three on the play, three or two on the play. Clock is still running. It's under seven minutes now. Well, Robin, beginning Friday, November 30th, VSU hosts the Park Avenue Bank Classic Basketball Tournament. For more tournament action information, contact the VSU Athletic Office at 333-5890.
fans on their feet, a huge third down. I know we said that about every third down in this quarter, but they are huge for the Indians. Third down and three. Blazers need a stop here. Hit them. He eludes a tackle. He's downfield, and it's going to be a touchdown. Number 30, Rodney Wallace, the tailback, a freshman tailback. Wow. And the Indians have just taken the lead over the Vodasta State Blazers. I cannot believe what I just saw. We'll watch this replay here. Luke Samples hands off to Rodney Wallace. Just some missed tackles right here. Number 47, Wesley Brown had a shot at him. Wallace is a big back, just sheds him right there. And then uh, number 13 may have had a shot. From there, it's clear coasting all the way in the end zone. And Catawba takes the lead. A timeout before the point after. With 6.15 on the clock. Well, as to be expected, Robin, as you move further into this tournament, you know, the teams that you play are going to get tougher and tougher. Valdosta hasn't had too much trouble handling any of their regular season opponents, so to come in here on their home field and be tested like this by the Catawba Indians has got to be something new and foreign to this Valdosta club. You're getting a big wake-up call here, but fortunately there is still six minutes and 15 seconds on the clock, plenty of time for the Blazers to get something going. So we'll have to see what happens. Drama here in Valdosta, Georgia, Baysmore Hyder Stadium. Got a timeout here before the point after. The uh, Catawba Indians just scored a touchdown. They're up, top, they're, uh, up over the uh, Blazers, 27 to 26, which means a, uh, I wonder if they're thinking about doing a two-point conversion, because if they don't, if they just go for the point after, the Blazers can win with a field goal. Otherwise, they could just tie with a field goal. We'll have to see what uh, Catawba Indians. Uh, well, Luke Samples is in this huddle right here with the Catawba coaches, and it looks like Yep, they're going to go for two. Catawba head coach David Bennett has decided to go for two. And if they don't win, if they don't get this, then uh, the Blazers would only be down by one. But either way, the Blazers are still down to Catawba. Huge play. Probably the biggest game of the – biggest play of the game right here. A two-point conversion saving tackle for number one. That's Tobias Carter. So, with 6.15 to go here in the game, the Valdosta State Blazers are down 26-27. to to the Catawba Indians from Salisbury, North Carolina. Pass thrown out there to number 10, Nick Means, and Tobias Carter just cleans him up. No chance of the two-point conversion on that play. Blazer fans look kind of stunned, while Catawba fans, on the, on the uh, contrary, are very excited and, and thrilled about the scenario their team is in right now. Well, Catawba does have the lead. They're going to have to rely on their defense to step up, win this game for them. They kind of shot themselves in the foot going for a two-point conversion there and not getting it, so. It feels kind of good, I'm sure, to have the number one ranked defense in the nation on the field, but you got the number two ranked offense in the country on the other side of the ball. So we'll have to see what happens. A battle from offense and defense here. Back to receive for the Blazers, number four, Reggie Mosley, and number 14, Aaron Jenkins. Mosley's back there after the, the uh, fumble from Demetric Moore. Kicking off number 12, that's Matt Gross. 6.15 to go in the fourth quarter. We'll have to see what happens here. Well, if ever there was a time for Reggie Mosley to come up big with a long return, this is it right here, Robin. Let's see what happens. There it is. Reggie go. Mosley breaking through. Mm. A touchdown saving tackle. Mosley out to the 40 yard line. Blazer fans thrilled. We'll have to see what happens. The drama is set, 6.05 on the clock as the Blazers begin their final drive. Very close to breaking this one right here. Reggie Mosley starts off to his right, gets a whole good block there by number 14, Aaron Jenkins. And if he would have beat this defender right there, number 25, then he would have been gone. Dusty Bonner, the Harlan Hill Award winner from last year. No one has played better in college football the last two seasons in Division II than Dusty Bonner. We'll see how he can handle the pressure right now. Bonner throws out to his uh, running back, Aaron Jenkins. Jenkins is scooting through. Breaks a couple tackles out to the 50-yard line. It's going to be close to a first down there. I yeah, Robin, uh, to use the word crunch time would be <laughs> <laughs> a little overworked. Everybody's got to be focused. Everybody has to know their assignments. The receivers have to run their routes well, and the offensive line just has to you know, protect the quarterback. they got to give Dusty time to sit back there and throw. Second down and one for the Blazers. Oh 
Bonner hands off to Jenkins. He's through. He's got the first down. The play and just the crossed midfield on the carry by Jenkins. Chains will move. Five fifteen and the clock is running in the fourth quarter here at Baysmore Hyder Stadium. Catawba and Vadasa State locked in a battle to see who gets to play a team out of Michigan in the next round of the NCAA Division II playoffs. Clock just rolled over five minutes. We're now under. Bonner looks, throws out to Jenkins again. Ooh. Jenkins is tackled in the backfield for a loss of about two yards. And that number one ranked defense in the nation stepped up right there. Well, Robin, Coach Hatcher went to Aaron Jenkins on the three previous plays back to back to back. And uh, you got to wonder why he's not maybe uh, throwing downfield a little bit instead. Second down and 12, loss of two on the play for the Blazers. They're now back in their own territory on the 49-yard line. Bonner across the middle, complete to number two, Michael Greer. Greer moving out the sidelines. He's down, and he should have gotten a Blazer first down, and he did. So after the loss, the Blazers come back and get another first down. Just great play right here by number two, Michael Greer, as he comes across the middle of the field. Bonner hits him. It almost looks like he was just going to go straight out the sideline. Instead, right here, misses by number eight and just turns up the sideline to get first down yardage for the Blazers. Ball is now on the Indians' 35-yard line. Blazers are only 35 yards from a touchdown. And boy, do we need one. The clock is on 414. Bonner's in shotgun format. He's got two receivers near and far. He's looking to throw. He's got excellent protection. Now he's about. Now he's got pressure. He's running, and he steps out of bounds. Ooh. Well, Robin, like you said, they're 35 yards away from a touchdown. In all reality, though, they might be 35 yards away from a trip to the semifinals. Mm -hmm. Bonner on his scramble got four yards, got second down and six coming up now. Ball is now on the 31-yard line of the Indians. Clock is still on 4.04. Play clock's winding down with, with 10 seconds on it. Bonner's in shotgun. Better get moving. The, clock, the play clock's winding down here. CJ Lofton goes in motion. They just get the playoff. Aaron Jenkins scooting around the end. Jenkins Go, is baby. through. He's scooting. He's Jenkins not down yet, go. Moving. A flag, flag comes flying, that will probably be. I hope it's hot. It'll probably be. It's holding. either holding or a face mask. Now watch Aaron Jenkins right here. We've seen him run this play a million times already tonight. And he just does such a great job of just shedding tacklers. There's one missed, there's two missed. You think he's gonna be brought down and he's still on his feet. The call is against the Indians making the Blazers, uh, the ball is being moved forward. It's about the first call that goes to Blazers' way today, it seems like. 3.55 left on the clock here in the fourth quarter. Blazers are, are down by one point to the Indians of Catawba. It's going to be an automatic first down. And Robin, right here with three minutes, 50-something seconds left in the fourth quarter with the Catawba Indians leading by one. This is what separates the men from the boys. If the Blazers are a championship team, they're going to step up and come through right here. The ball is moved all the way to the eight-yard line. Got a first and goal, Blazers. Bonner is in the shotgun with Jenkins behind him. Three receivers spread out very far on the near side. Bonner's looking, looking, knocked down. Could have been intercepted by number 27 for the Indians. That's Ryan Norman, a junior defensive back from Norcross, Georgia, another Georgia boy. Yeah, nice play right there by the Catawba defensive back. That pass was intended for number seven. So we look here. Throws in the end zone intended for Carlos Johnson. And 27 comes up and makes a nice clean play on the ball. Almost intercepted. And that'll bring up second and eight now for the Blazers. Second down and goal. Defense! Defense! This is the end of one season. Either the Catawba Indians or the Varasa State Blazers season. It's coming down to this. Oh, no. Probably going to be false start. It's a flag on the field. Probably going to be false start, probably on the Blazers. It wasn't delay of game because the play clock still had it some time gonna on be. it. Yep. It is going to be false start on the Blazers. Another nagging penalty. Start against the Blazers. 
Blazers are going to accept the penalty, so it'll be second down and 13. 3.48 on the clock, and it's not moving. So we see Bonner looking to the sideline to get some last-minute instructions from Coach Hatcher. Number 20, <coughs> Tyran Robinson goes out of the game. Number two, Michael Greer comes in. Three minutes and 48 seconds left in one season, either for the Blazers or for the uh, Indians. We'll have to see. Second down and goal from the 13-yard line. Bonner over the middle to Michael Greer. Greer's got two tacklers in front of him. Can he get in? He dives and touchdown. It is a touchdown for the Blazers. Blazers go back on top of the Catawba Indians with 3.40 to go on the clock. They're going to hand the ball to their defense. Well, guess what? Michael Greer gets my vote for MVP. Now watch this, what he does after the catch. Same play that he's run a million times today, but watch what he does when he gets towards the end zone. Has to jump, make that extra effort, and just sticks the ball over the goal line. Great play by number two, Michael Greer. Michael Greer, the transfer from UGA. Where would we be without Michael Greer in this game today? He has been amazing. He's been everywhere. And he gets the, uh, the game saving, at least for now, touchdown for the Blazers. You're right, Robin. He's been more than a welcome addition to this Valdosta State club. Surprisingly, that's only his first touchdown of the year. So it couldn't have come at a better time. And uh, the Blazer the fans are on their feet. Timeout. Take one more look at it. Michael Greer just comes streaking across the middle. And there are some Catawba fenders there that could have put a stop to him. A nice lead block right there by number seven, Carlos Johnson. That made the difference on the play. Blazer fans are thrilled. Michael Greer with the, with the extra heart and oomph got into that end zone. Blazers are on top, 32 to 27. Hopefully they get an extra point. They may go for two actually on this. We'll have to see. I don't know about a, a two point conversion. If I'm Coach Hatcher, kick the extra point and put your defense on the field and let them win the ball game for you. If, if this oh, it looks like they are gonna go for two. We'll see if this is a good decision or not. Blazers going for two. Bonner's got three, got two receivers on the on the uh, far side. Only CJ Lawson, the tight end, on this side. And we'll see what happens here with the Blazers' attempt for a two-point conversion. The Indians failed on theirs earlier. Watch for CJ Lofton to sneak through. There's Reggie Mosley. Reggie Mosley, touchdown. Point after. Two-point conversion for the Blazers with 3.40 to go. Blazers are on top 34 to 27. That makes it. A full seven-point lead. All right, watch here is Dusty Bonner. just looking uh, Reggie Mosley's way the whole way, and uh, Reggie Mosley is just all alone waiting in the back end of the end zone. Two-point conversion is good by the Blazers. And this place is rocking. It's all coming down to this. Three minutes and 40 seconds to go in the game. The Blazers have reclaimed the lead, 34-27 to 27 over the Catawba Indians. And here come the special teams units back on the field. So now it's time for this Black Swarm Blazer defense to step up big. If ever there was a time to do so, now is the time. The Catawba Indians are going to have to march the length of the field, score a touchdown. An extra point would tie the game, or they could go, to, go for two for the win. Drama here at Baysmore Hodder Stadium. We'll have to see how it unfolds. Bryce Harrington on the kick. Back to receive the for the Catawba Indians is number seven, O.J. Lennon. This is what football is all about. Instead, it's going to be taken by number 10, Nick Means. Brought out of bounds, and here comes a flag. Probably going to be a late hit on the Blazers. Not a smart decision. I don't know what number 12, Fred Dunn, was thinking when he played that hit. Well, that's just a stupid mistake right there. I mean, they've got decent enough field position already. The last thing that you want to do is tack on some extra yardage with a late hit. Yep, it is. Late hit, personal foul on the Blazers. going to move the ball forward, I believe. We'll see how much they move it forward. I believe it's going to be about 15 yards, probably to across midfield. We'll have to see where they mark it. Okay, we've just got an ups update on the other game, Saginaw Valley State versus uh, Green Valley State. Saginaw is leading 27-23 to 23 in that game with 10 minutes left. 
actually Grand Valley State is the stronger of those two teams, so we would rather face Saginaw in the next round in the semifinals. So. If we get there, that is. <laughs> the winner of this game will play that game. Dusty Bonner over on the sidelines is cheering on this Blazer defense. We'll have to see what happens. Both, uh, both sides of the field, fans are on their feet, 331. The ball is on the 49-yard line of the Indians, their own 49-yard line out at midfield. Sample is going long. He's got his defender beat, but he's, he's out, out of, of bounds. bounds. Wow. He's out of bounds at the 25-yard line. And uh, the Indians are in business again. Yeah, Robin, the plot thickens here at Baysmore Hodder Stadium as we take a look at this replay. Luke Samples drop back, one pump fake, and then throws downfield for number 10, Nick Means. He actually might have been able to go the distance right here if he wouldn't have uh, taken a step out of bounds. So. Means beat his defender. That was number three, Zed Dickerson. The Blazer defense has to buckle down here and see what happens. Handoff right there by, to number 30, Rodney Wallace, and a good tackle made by number three, Seth Dickerson, for the Blazers. Gain of four. Second down, the clock is running, 3.05. Left to go in the game. Blazer fans on the, on the opposite side chanting defense. Second down and six from uh, the Blazer 21-yard line are the Indians. Samples looking, looking to Pick throw. Off. Oh. Almost intercepted, number 26. That's Derek Braxton. He had an interception earlier in this game. Boy, the Blazers wish that was an interception. Braxton had that in his fingertips, and he almost got it. Check it out here on the replay. Samples throw into the near side, and Derek Braxton just steps in front of number 10, Nick Means. Almost comes up with an interception. That would have been so huge if he would have ran that one back for a touchdown. The freshman quarterback, Luke Samples, is facing a tough third down and six. It's the play of the game right here. Ball is caught. We'll have to see if it's enough for a first down. It looks as though it is. And indeed it is. It's going to be a Catawba first down. The ball is now on the 15, 14 yard line, excuse me, of the Blazers. Indians are threatening here. Got 224 left to go in the season. Here the clock is running for one of these two teams. Samples is back to throw. Throws high and tackled almost immediately by Tobias Carter. Gain of about five yards on the play. Clock still running. This is just great football right here as we watch these two teams just trade back. That's number two, Squirewell right there. Number one, Tobias Carter with a tackle along with Mike Fowler. Clock now down to 150. But this right here is what you play your whole season for. This is why you're out there in uh, spring training running laps. The ball was fumbled but picked up, and I believe it was recovered by the Indians. I don't think they lost anything on the play. But this is what you play, play for all year long is this shot right here in the playoffs. Timeout on the field. Minute 25 on the clock. We'll take a break here and be back with uh, this exciting conclusion to Blazer football on VSU TV. Have you saved a life today? I took two flood victims to a shelter. I donated a day's pay to help a family that lost everything in a fire. Have you saved a life today? I teach a class in infant CPR. I donated a pint of blood. Have you saved a life today? No, but today somebody saved mine. The American Red Cross, together, we can save a life. Welcome back to Baysmore Hodder Stadium. 125 to go. Huge third down and 10 for the Indians. Deep in Blazer territory. It's up. Going for the corner. Not Was he in bounds when he? Yeah, they're going to give him the catch right inside about the two, three yard line. Wow. This is huge as we take a look at this replay. Samples throws to the corner. That's uh, completed by number seven, O.J. Lennon. 
He gets both feet down, and that's good. If you're just joining us, you've missed a great game. We got a minute 20 to go in the fourth quarter. Blazers leading the Catawba Indians 34 to 27. The Indians are threatening. They're down on the Blazer two yard line, two yards away from a touchdown that would tie this game. So it's first and goal. Catawba's got all the chances in the world. Time is not a factor for him. And there's number 30. It's Rodney Wallace. He's tackled for a loss. Lost of about two or three on the play. Factor now is the clock. It's running. It's down to 108. And second and goal coming up. See, now let's hope that the Blazer defense can do this about two more times. As we see Kirby Smart calling in his plays. 50 seconds left on the clock. Second down and goal from the four-yard line. Handoff, no good. The Blazers stuff him. Huge defensive stop. That's Mike Fowler, the big man in the Blazer Black Swarm defense, doing an excellent job there. Kind of a busted play right there by uh, Kataba. I don't think they could decide if he wanted to hand it off or if uh, Luke Samples was going to keep it. The clock is still running, 22 seconds, third down. Wow, they're going to have to hurry up. Ball is still on the four-yard line, 15 seconds to go. They got time for one, maybe two more plays. We'll see what happens. He's oh, running. He's going to get in. And he's in for the touchdown. That's number 21 for the Indians. That's Tony Hawkins, tailback sophomore out of Fayetteville, North Carolina. Wow, as we take a look right here, Hawkins just has great lead blocking right here. Number 26, Derek Braxton is the only man who had a chance to get him, and by the time he got there, he was already in the end zone. Eight seconds on the clock here. Timeout is called. Yeah, Catawba definitely wants to talk this one over. So what do you do, Robin? You kick the extra point, go into overtime, or do you go for two right here and uh, steal a win out of here in Baysmore Hunter Stadium? You definitely go for the point after, only for one reason, and that is they tried a two-point conversion earlier and it didn't work, and if it doesn't work, now your season's over. So you got to go for yeah. the extra point. And Blazers hope to uh, – Blazers are actually in a pretty good position here. They hope for a block, you know, on this point after attempts. But if they don't get it, hey, we go into, into overtime. Right. Yeah, you got to go with the sure thing here. They'd be foolish to try to go for two. Looks like they are going to uh, go for the point after because number 12, the kicker, Matt Gross, is on the field. In come the defenders. Let's see how much heart this Blazer team has. See if they can get their fingertips on this ball, anything to knock it away. We'll see. Eight seconds to go in the game. Blazers on top, 34-33. Point after attempt, forthcoming from the Indians. Kick is up. And it's good. So eight seconds to go here in the game. The Blazers and the uh, Catawba Indians tied at 34 apiece in this second round playoff matchup in NCAA Division II football. This is just unbelievable. This is everything that playoff football should be. Catawba with a late drive right here, ties up the score, and the Blazers and Indians head into overtime. Got eight seconds to go here. Hey, you know, we could use a little Reggie Mosley uh, magic here. We'll have to see what yes, happens. Yes, we could. I'm sure there'll be some extra tight defense on uh, special teams here from the uh, Catawba Indians. We'll have to see. Well, this is just a great effort. You got to give Catawba credit to come in here to our home field and to play as well as they have today. They've done a it's great job. It's just amazing. Yeah, they put on a good show here today. And not only that, they put on a great show for some great fans. There are a lot of fans here. North Carolina is not very near but off to Georgia. Yeah, that's a, that's a good little drive down here. They've done a great job supporting their team. Kicking off for the Indians is, again, number 12. That's Matt Gross. And back to receive, number four, Reggie Mosley. And number 14, that's Aaron Jenkins. Eight seconds to go on the clock. Well, this is almost like the start of a new game right here. This might as well be the first quarter. Gross is set to kick. It's an onside kick. It goes to number 96. He passes it back to Mosley. Mosley's out. He's running. He's down at the uh, his uh, own 34-yard line. Three seconds remain on the clock. Got time for one play here on offense for the Blazers. We'll have to see if they just down it or if Bonner tries to throw a little Hail Mary here of his own. No, you got to throw a Hail Mary Kind of Doug Flutie-esque, if you will. Oh, 
I thought the time was already expired off the clock. I thought we were in <laughs> overtime already. Did you? <laughs> you got three seconds. You're getting ahead of yourself here, Mike. <laughs> Looks like Bonner just might uh, take a knee. We'll have to see what he does here. Throw it deep. He does. He takes a knee. And uh, at the end of regulation, the score is 34-34. Blazers and Indians all tied up. We'll be right back with overtime on VSU TV. I hang out with a pretty trashy circle, the circle that helps this circle. It starts when we recycle trash at home. It's completed when we buy products made from recycled materials. Check the label for something called post-consumer recycled content. Then buy the highest percentage of it you can find. Complete the circle. Call 1-800-CALL-EDF for your free buy recycled shopping guide. 1-800-CALL-EDF. Welcome back to Baysmore Hyder Stadium. At the end of regulation, it's 34-34. Blazers and Indians all tied up. We are back here about to witness the coin toss to see which team goes first in overtime. Well, Robin, we've got an interesting set of parameters here in overtime. Whoever wins the coin toss will, they can either elect to keep the ball or to defer to the other team. And uh, each team gets a chance to start at the 25 yard line and score from there. So say Valdosta gets the ball first, they score. Catawba has a chance to come back on their own 25 and match the score of Valdosta. And it can go back and forth, they can trade touchdowns. So we might be here for a little while, we'll see what happens. It looks as though Catawba has won the coin toss. Indeed, they have. So Catawba won the coin toss. We'll have to see what happens here. There's no time on the clock. Cl uh, the clock is not an issue anymore. It's just uh, who can score and keep scoring. Catawba won, as we said, and they've elected to play defense, so they will uh, go up against the powerful Blazer offense first. And uh, the ball will be marked at the 25-yard line. I think that was a good call by the coaches from Catawba. Um, put your defense on the line and, and make the Blazers score against you. And then if they don't, it takes all the pressure away and, the, and your offense might be able to score a little more easy. The first uh, play in overtime, Blazers on offense. Here we go. We got three receivers on the far side. We got one on the near side. And Carlos Johnson is in motion. Jenkins is behind Bonner. Bonner's got great protection. He's throwing. He throws out to Carlos Johnson, who nice move. is moving, but he's not getting in the end zone. He gets down to about the 21-yard line. Nice couple of moves right there by Carlos Johnson, number seven, as we take a look here. Bonner throws out to his left-hand side into the flat. And after he makes a catch, Johnson just puts on the brakes. And the defender slides right by him. Actually does that twice. That's going to bring up second and six now for the Blazers. Three receivers on this side now, and only uh, Reggie Mosley on the far side. Jenkins is with Bonner in the backfield. Bonner's looking to pass. He throws. Throws long. Almost oh. intercepted by number 27 from Catawba. That's number uh, it's Ryan Norman, a junior defensive back out of Norcross, Georgia. Wow, I wish, I bet. Ryan Norman wish he had that, wish he could have that one back because, I mean, that was nearly intercepted in the end zone. We got a third down and six coming up now for the Blazers. This is exactly what Catawba wanted to see. Ball's on their own 21-yard line. <coughs> or, excuse me, ball's on uh, the other opposing 21-yard line. Two receivers near and far. Bonner's got excellent protection again. Now he's having a scramble. Whoa. He's got two guys running for him. And he, the ball is stripped, but it rolls out of bounds, I think. Great coverage right there by Catawba. Number 58 just collapsed on Bonner. I don't think Bonner saw the defender coming from his blind side, and they just stripped it out. He fumbled, and it rolled out of bounds. Hatcher looks puzzled as he's trying to figure out what's going on. The ball is all the way back now at the 34-yard line. 34 yards from uh, the end zone for the Blazers. They've got to score on this because you can't be guaranteed of keeping the Indians from scoring on the other end. It's going to be fourth and 19. So obviously the most critical play of the Valdosta Blazers season.
Bonner looking again almost intercepted. And it's underthrown, intended for Reggie Mosley. Number 53, Todd McComb. And so the uh, Indians will get their shot. And I have to mention that these 34 points the Blazer defense has allowed today is the most, or the tied for the most allowed all, all season. They allowed uh, 34 points in their battle at Central Arkansas earlier this season. So now the Indians take over with a fresh set of downs on first down from the 25 yard line. If they score, they get the victory. Let's see what happens. Samples is in the pocket. He's got one receiver near and far and two guys with him in the backfield. He hands the ball off to number 30 who gets nowhere. Rodney Wallace on the carry right there. Number 44 for the Blazers. That's Reggie Rose in with the tackle. As we see here, Samples hands off and watch 44 just shed his tackler. Come up and make the play right there. Kirby Smart yelling in at his defense, trying to keep them going here. Second down and 10 for the Indians from Catawba. Number two, Squire Wells out here to our near side. Hands off to Wallace again. This time he gets a little more room. He gets down inside the 20, down to about the 18 yard line. Tackled by number 26, Derek Braxton and number 47, Wesley Brown. So third down coming up and about two or three. It's gonna bring up third and three now for the Indians of Catawba. So what do you do here, Robin? You throw for the end zone or? I don't know. I'd give it to Wallace again and see if he can get pick up three yards for me. You gotta wonder what's going through David Bennett's head, head coach for the Indians. He I stopped on third. Don't think he got it. I think he's about a yard or so short. We'll have to see. The fans are cheering. Oh, so. wow. Here comes a field goal for the win. That's exactly what's going to happen. This is uh, this ball is marked at the 25-yard line, so we got about a 35 or so yard kick coming up for Matt Gross. Blazers call timeout, I think. Yes, they do. Blazers call timeout. So we'll take a timeout as well and be back with the conclusion of this game on VSU TV. Okay, ready? One zip, my point. Two zip, my point. Yes. Three zip. There is a better way to have fun with history. Visit americaslibrary.gov. Log on, play around, learn something. Five zip, your serve. Welcome back to Baysmore Hyder Stadium. We are in overtime now, fourth down facing the Indians. They've decided to kick a field goal from the 25-yard line. It's about a 35-yard field goal. If they, if they make it, Indians win. They, they don't make it, we go back to uh, Blazers on offense. We'll have to see what happens. Here it is. Kick is up. It's good. Indians win. The Indians win. Wow, what wow. a game. Fans storming onto the field as the Indians have upset the number one team in Division II football, the Valdosta State Blazers. Mike, I don't know what to say. I don't either. I'm just completely stunned. I'm speechless. Just leaves a sour taste in the mouth of these Valdosta fans. But, I mean, you've got to give the Blazers credit. They really had a great season this year. We advanced one game further than we did last year. The sad part about it is that Dusty Bonner will not be back at quarterback next year. And uh, I don't know, we're going to have to look at the future of this Blazer football team. There are 14 seniors on this Vadasa State roster, and they have absolutely nothing to hang their heads about. Great game here. Unfortunately, it didn't go the Blazers' way. But uh, we like to say congratulations to the Catawba Indians from Salisbury, North Carolina. They did a great job. And uh, for all the VSU TV crew with Mike Jabor, I'm Robin Espain. Thanks for watching VSU football this season on VSU TV. We'll see you next season.